Okay. All right. Then I guess we'll just get started and move past the soccer moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, we're missing a few people, but hopefully uh, they will be around soon. Yeah, let's hope By for it. Can I go uh, first for the third topic? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to forget, so remind me. Um, all right, I will. All right. <clears throat> okay, hello, This is going to be good. Yeah, uh, this will be back. interesting. Uh, doing the Reverie Roundtable once again. Uh, we got a lot of great guests uh, with you, uh, with us, uh, that have uh, been kind enough to join. Um, starting from the top, right? Um, least but first, uh, Dylan Burns TV. Hey, Dylan, thank you for uh, stopping by. Um, uh, I really appreciate you. Um, unfortunately, you're wearing that same shirt. I thought we bullied you into not wearing that anymore, but here you are. Um, <laughs> I like so, the shirt. Uh, <laughs> I like the shirt, all right? Uh, uh, Dylan Burns is amazing. He's been a really big supporter of this channel. and uh, we Yeah, me too, him. Yates. Me too. Uh, Dylan, thanks for being here, buddy. No problem. Once again, I come here bearing a gift. A gift. And that gift is knowledge. And from the bad judgment we have seen today from Prime's chat, they need that gift desperately. <laughs> so I have come here to smite the ignorance from the dunderheads in, in chat, from the dunderheads in the political Twitch community. That's what I've come here to do, is give them the gift of Dylan Burns. And I hope they will receive it well. It's a um, it's a <laughs> world title, a wrestling right. world title. Oh, okay. it's the belt. All right, and it's over um, and over and over again. So, um, uh, we see that uh, Dylan is in a mood uh, today. It's okay. All right, I'm moving past it. Um, uh, uh, his, his narcissism is uh, showing, but that's a, that's why we love him, right? He gives us something new every time he shows up. Um, all right, uh, next we go to Sig uh, Natural. Thank you, Sig Natural. Thank yeah, it's you. so good. Always happy to see you. Um, You've been uh, livening up my panels, uh, uh, throwing out some interesting perspectives. So I'm, I'm happy that you're here for us uh, once again. Yeah, I'm uh, also happy to be here. Um, I'm often on this channel on the um, All Black Everything uh, thing there. Um, but I think that this is only my second time doing the R&R, &R, I think, actually, which is going to be uh, pretty interesting. We get to talk about politics with people that are not Black. Oh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> White people don't bite, I promise. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, next, uh, Demon Mama, who we've talked to uh, quite a few times to this channel. Demon Mama, thank you for coming back. Thank you uh, for spending a bit more of your time uh, with us. Demon Mama, how are you today? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Demon Mama. You can find me at Demon Mama Live, the name right down here on Twitch. Coming soon, DemonMama.com. Get in while the getting's hot, because if you sub to my channel now, you'll get a sub to the site for free. So, you want to check that out. I have been called many times the spiciest person on politics twitch but if you really like to uh, learn about politics history i do political edutainment we do a lot of variety stuff we do some react content and i debate a lot of people so if you like that stuff come check out my channel we'd love to have you my community is very very fun uh thanks for having me today prime absolutely yes and everyone please go follow demon mama um continuously impressed with demon mama uh and her performance um so uh seems like a very knowledgeable person um and we're so happy to have her here okay uh, Happy to be here. Going to our buddy Pisco. Pisco, uh, thanks for being here. As always, Pisco, very familiar to my uh, Oof, community. True, alien. Um, been strong That's all right. here. We live, we learn. Born from my womb. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pisco is also after my shirt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I just want to say props to Prime. Great lineup today. Great picks of topics today i don't know who made them but they were awesome topics this week dylan burns is 19 years old you weren't expecting that i wasn't expecting that he looks like he's 25 26 but the fact that he's not even 20 should discredit everything he says about everything i rest my case rampant ageism rest. <laughs> Base. Uh, it makes sense to me yes um uh, yeah. rampant ageism uh, none. Oh, wow. 
Okay, everybody who has not worked on a winning campaign. Uh, Dylan is the youngest so now, now, now it's foreign winning. policy okay, advisor so in the history of the United States. You. Just so you know. Is that what you want? But yeah, and that's that's a perfect panel show. Where people it just, it just becomes Dylan opinion. Burns' stream. It's just, that's I don't know. It. It's just, I think he's, he's, um, I think he's 17. Him at this point. Yeah. <laughs> or 18, I don't know. to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love Dylan. Uh, yes, uh, we all do. All right. Dylan Burns is based. Fanatic. That's Mr. Fanatic to you. Um, he is here, uh, back, uh, with us once again. Um, we're happy to have him. Uh, Fnatic, uh, brings in the spicy takes often. Um, and, uh, that's it why is he's damn good content, but also he's a damn good guy. I appreciate talking to you. Fnatic, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And today I'm going to be very zen. You see, I've decided to come prepared, uh, with the arguments, but also to come prepared with very tranquil music such as found on my album soundscapes which just came out september 22nd uh there will be a link provided for you later on but i will be zen today as i will have this music playing in the background so i can stay calm and collected despite some we got some good ass exactly self promos here <laughs> uh yeah uh makes sense um <laughs> <laughs> um and i suggest you also uh, get that album yeah that's what i use really uh oh what's um, dylan got I, uh -oh. i'm uh driven to utter rage um by what's happening here and in, around the world honestly right um fanatic makes great music and you want to be a part of that so uh, pog I think this is pog uh, and last but not least uh shadows of liberty shadows of liberty uh, who I've talked to I once on camera. I think once once vaguely when I was on Tiberius's panel and he raided you and we joined your thing. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, uh, I... yeah. So uh, I'm Shadows. Good of Liberty. on Dylan. Burns. You might know me as the guy with the Israel flag. You might know me as the guy who had colorful statements to say about the state of Iran and how they should be treated. But for now, you can just call me Shadows. I'm Twitch.tv's favorite baby-faced liberal, but you cannot say that in my chat because if you do, you will be joining the Kami Club, which is code word for all the people who I've banned. But you can come and check me out if you're interested in, you know, talking about public policy, Clans. economics, um, or even, you know, you just want to read the news with me. I do all sorts of stuff oh, that boy. is related to politics. And yeah, that's about it. Yes, wow. he did. He did. Uh, say that. Once again, I right. really want to have a conversation with you. You could. About you could do that. This is what I said last. You just time. might get banned. I'll say that again. Holy mm -hmm. crap! Um, I feel like that's a great uh, email. We could have a good time, uh, you and I. Um, mostly Hopefully. yelling at each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I'd rather debate him. Uh, thank you for being here. Really appreciate. I'd rather you debate him. Boycott by here on the reverie. Um, okay, so uh, I guess let's uh, try uh, topic <laughs> three first. And topic three was actually Mama one Trump, uh, created by Shadows of Liberty. Um, what would uh, four more years of Trump's foreign policy look like? And what path could it send America down? If Joe Biden wins, what parts of Trump's foreign policy will he likely flip on? And how would the, uh, this help slash hurt uh, relations with certain allies? I'm sure he'll be over. Um, so uh, I guess we'll start with um, <clears throat> we'll start with Shadows since he specifically requested it. So Shadows, please. Um, all, all right. So um, I would like to say that um, I believe that if we go down uh, another term of Donald Trump, get we feedback. have four more years of Trumpism, it will actually be significantly worse than it will be for um, benefits. Um, I think, hold on one second. Uh, I believe he's in a dorm, so uh, please excuse him. Uh, uh, this is topic no three, right? Yeah, topic three. Topic three. Okay, we're starting with, topic. Starting yeah, with yeah. topic three. Okay, that's fine. All right, apologies. My parents are yelling very loudly at my dog, and it's very distracting. Um, but no, it is mom, literally is going to be much more detrimental than it will be good. Obviously, if you see my debate with Dylan, you know that I think his policies towards the state of Israel um, are very good. His um, stance towards Iran, I agree with um, a very hard line, um, you know, deterrent stance, or as he put it, don't fuck with us. Um, uh, I sort of agree with that. But I also think the there's a huge problem with Trump, and that is he is one, he is no doubt an isolationist. Oh, I'm going to get and him on I this think one. What he has done with um, NATO what he wants to do with the World Health Organization, what he wants to do with to more trade deals. He already renegotiated NAFTA. 
He might pull this out of the WTO if he gets four years and he gets his way. Um, so I think, you know, all this stuff he's going to do, pull out of the world stage, you know, weaken the U.S. as a superpower, even if he spends more on the military. A lot of that money goes more towards, you know, like money for um, paychecks for soldiers. It goes to VA, you know, different sub departments. Um, so I think he would be, you know, just totally awful. Um, and I think if Biden is elected, he's going to flip on some obvious things like the JCPOA, which... I would not be surprised him pulling out obviously does literally nothing. It is entirely symbolic. Uh, I don't really think that'll hurt our relations with Israel and uh, Gulf states. But I do think if he moves the embassy back to Tel Aviv, that is going to significantly hurt Probably. our relationship with Israel. But I think when it comes to our industrial no, I think he is. I think he's uh, allies, which is South Korea, Japan, Canada, Mexico, European countries, I think it's going to become significantly better. And I think he's going to combat uh, the Belt and Road Initiative correctly. Unfortunately, you know, you don't really create new allies by calling countries shithole countries. What you do is you give them more aid and, you know, you say, we want to build a relationship with you. We want to build up your economy. So I think uh, Biden yeah, I wonder be significantly better. Oh, I think he will. Africa I can Latin tell America Dylan's mad as fuck. Dylan's getting okay. mad. Um, you can see it on that. his face. All right. So Dylan uh, doesn't we'll, hide his anger uh, very well. Go to uh, Demon Mama next. Yeah, um, Donald Trump's uh, foreign policy has been nothing, um, nothing short of a disaster. Um, he's been an embarrassment um, to our diplomats, to all of our incredibly hardworking diplomats, many of whom I don't necessarily agree with, but nonetheless do not be deser uh, do not deserve to have their work binned on the behalf of uh, of a president's ego. Also, I just wanted to to comment in my opening statement in response to something Shadow said, which is, in my opinion, a a a gross misframing of what Trump actually said about Iran. He did not just say, don't fuck with us. He said, if you fuck with us, we will do things to you that no one else has ever done. And to me, that is a terrifying concept. The idea that we, the most powerful nation in the world, would encourage our leader to threaten horrific acts on any nation, no matter how much we oppose that nation, is, in my mind, unforgivable. And I think that that alone tells us what his intentions are for the next four years. A, a reign of foreign policy terror, um, backed by his ego and also impeded by his ego. He can't even commit to a proper view because it comes, at the end of the day, Trump's foreign policy comes down to making himself look good and enriching himself. And if we have that type of an approach to foreign policy, we're going to be in a far worse place than we've ever been in the past. So that's my opinion on it, and uh, I'll I'll cede to the floor. Okay, uh, fanatic. Well, so to be honest with you, this is something I know very little about. I really never have studied like foreign policy. I've always like hyper focused on U.S. policy and like just things that like pertain directly to us. I understand that we are in a very globally connected world, and the things that we do can influence other people. And America does sit in to take the the thing. Uh, the, the position of like policing the rest of the world. Um, but me personally, I've never really gotten invested in so much of foreign politics because of how much we have grown here. Not that we don't have a great country, not that I don't love this country, but there's a lot of stuff. Pretty sure so, um, Shadows is on. an apologist so that's so money killing. It's kind of like more of a libertarian stance. I've always felt like we need to really be focusing on U.S. politics. So this is something I'm just going to I might throw that one in there just to get the, the blood. Unless I hear something stupid. <laughs> um, well, I'll say to you, uh, fanatic, that fanatic's cool. Um, I like fanatic. If you're making out as criticism, you never have to. Uh, uh, and qualify. yes, that is the fanatic from the fighting games states, community. He's not here. The uh, fanatic. You never have to qualify. He's a very, um, very well known uh, as long game as streamer. You're, uh, being a good faith actor, then yeah, you know, um, you can say, uh, "Fuck America." Kind of cool to be on feel. a panel with him. Um, honestly, next, Signatural. Hey, what's up, guys? Signatural coming in with the open. Oh, he totally did. Yeah. On foreign policy yep that's what we're talking about um who man huh there there's this thing called hard power and there's this thing called soft power right on like an international scale and everything hard power is like i've got the big gun the big stick and bombs fuck you you can't mess with me because i'll just blow you up and kill you right and soft power is like hey man you want to be friends you know i'm giving you stuff you're giving me stuff and everything also, I noticed you got a big ass fucking stick there that could blow up my enemy over there. I mean, hey, you know, we're friends. Hey, if you mess with them, 
they mess soft with you, power. they mess with me. Maybe you can like help me out a little bit. You know, that's soft power. You know, um, we got a lot. The of way of ooh, we got ooh. plenty of that. But like the problem is, so do a bunch of other fucking countries. But like the thing is, we also had a ton of soft power. We still have a lot, but Trump seems to keep hurting it. There's there's less faith in the United States as it seems to uh, as it seems to be. Less countries that are just like, huh, you know, the, the U.S. I don't really want to trust them. We don't really care too much about them. We don't really trust them what they're doing, especially because they're like, fuck you on trade, fuck you on this. They're they're not giving to as much to us as they could. They're saying, well, we want this. From Dylan's going to bring out so hard power in this debate that much. It seems like Trump keeps doing that a lot. I like them both the boycotts. States. And um, I, I really don't like it. I like the fact that we're – this sounds so fucked up, by the way. This is going to sound really fucked up. I, I kind of like our position in the world kind of of being just like a really big central figure globally. I, I kind of like that. Nice. I, uh, you liked both me and, um, and Pepe? I, I, I don't mm. know. Like having that completely go away – is something that makes me oh, whoa, is hard a power. little worried. Uwu is soft um, power, for sure. As far as everything is considered. Especially when I look at our top True. <laughs> it's under my kilt. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, next, uh, Pisco. Thank you, Prime. I don't think you need to be a foreign policy expert to know that four more years of Trump foreign policy will be bad. If all you knew was that Trump had the relationship that he had with our allies, as he does, which influences us in our trade policies, among other things. I think that would be enough to indicate that something was wrong. Um, if all you, for instance, uh, Trump's reticence to embrace the Paris Climate Accord. One, um, if all you knew was that Trump had a weird relationship with despots and authoritarians, such as his relationship with Vladimir Putin, I think that would be enough for him to openly question, for instance, our own United States Intelligence Service's conclusion about election interference in the 2018 Helsinki meeting with Russia, that would tell you, I think, a lot of what you needed to know. If all you know, knew was with respect to his positioning yeah, this is gonna on be China good. and the disastrous policy that's been, or on North Korea and his failure to affect real change, I think that would be um, enough, if not sufficient, evidence that his policy was a failure. On Iran, Another instance of complete failure, where before we had a you know bilateral agreement. Don't be discouraged, Yates. Have watchers on it's the ground. It's good to learn these to things. The kind of build up of arms that we were worried about. You'll endear yourself with Zoomers if you try to embrace to their culture. Bargain for a Take consideration of releasing certain funds. Nah, there's things. some good ones. That was an agreement that we could all live with. That had the approval of a lot of our uh, foreign our foreign intelligence consensus and our State Department, and that was thrown away undermining our credibility for years to come. So you'll learn all, I think, Cash McCrash. You'll learn them. Some just some of many examples. I can do a, I can do a primer after this with respect to um, foreign policy. And I think another four years of that would be extremely harmful for us and for democracy. I love Lady well. Gray. OK, um, and before we go to uh, Dylan, just wanted to say uh, thank you, Kino Elise, for resubbing uh, for five months in a row. It's really kind of you. Um, yeah, really appreciate that. Uh, and welcome back to the Russian generation. Okay, Dylan. So, yeah, I'll teach you I've all some some Zoomer culture. At length about foreign policy. I don't know much about foreign policy. Um, I just uh, was foreign policy advisor for two congressional campaigns. Worked on the Mike Ravel campaign. I studied it at the University of Maryland and majoring in it. Um, so as much as um, you know your average layman. Um, so I'll just try to cover a few things. So, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's presidency and foreign policy has been nothing but a complete and abject failure on every single level. And I believe Called he it. is the largest national security threat to the United States of America to date. Let's go True! To let's go, let's say, every country through the Middle East, right? Number one. Let's go to, for example, let's start with Iraq and Syria. With the Kurds. An issue I care deeply about, the SDF Syrian Democratic Forces flag is right there. Um, he backstabbed the Kurds famously, which led to one of the biggest ethnic displacements in probably Kurdish history with over a hundred. Tell him, Dylan. Tell him. Um, poli Kurdish politicians. Anybody got Dylan emotes in chat? Shot. I think my, my sub uh, lapsed, I so I don't have them right now. Sexual assault being used as a weapon of war. Uh, instances of family members being killed and being sold back to their family by Turkish backed militias, Ooh, which is a. We'll get NATO one of those on the website for sure. Turkey is a NATO member, which he backed 
through their war crimes, through all of this. At the same time, Biden has been lambasting Turkey on the issue of the Mediterranean. He was the one who helped set up Operation Inherent Resolve to back the Kurds originally and would be much better when it comes to the issue of the Kurds. Not to mention, Donald Trump got the Kurds in Iraq and the Kurds in Syria mixed up and started thanking the Kurds in Iraq for things the Kurds in Syria did, showing complete incompetence about the group he was even talking about, meaning that his decision, which led to over 12,000 martyrs who fought and defeated ISIS getting sacrificed, basically, all their sacrifice becoming in vain as Lamb ISIS based in Turkey. To prison due to the offenses from Turkey, once that happened and he made that decision, it was based off of basically zero knowledge of what was going on the ground. He didn't even know what the fuck he was talking about. Now, let's go over to Iran and his new policy of maximum pressure. Maximum failure would be a better way to describe his policy on Iran. Oh. After the Soleimani killing, after all the sanctions, after everything, and throwing oh. out the JCPOA, he has gotten us nothing Got when it comes to concessions from the state of Iran. They continue to back the the PMS, oh, they continue to back fish. Hezbollah in Lebanon, they continue to back all these organizations which fight against U.S. interests in the region, and honestly, if anything, actions from the PMF from Trump getting into office has only increased. If we actually talk about the Soleimani killing and he, oh, look, it's going to back off Iraq, Iran, it's going to push him away. Weeks after that, more American soldiers were killed by Katib Hezbollah strikes. Fixed. And it wasn't contractors like it was before, which actually started the strike being done it was actually american soldiers british soldiers iraqi soldiers getting killed by katib hezbollah strikes in iraq it has done nothing but endanger troops on the ground now if we were to go through like hell we could go to one of the bigger areas i could go on the middle east for hours about how he deployed how he's talking about how he was going to withdraw all the troops while deploying troops in saudi arabia how he said oh look at me i'm bringing peace to afghanistan while dropping more bombs on afghanistan than any president in u.s history uh, hyping up, uh, dropping the mother of all bombs on Afghanistan, trying to uh, withhold and take away drone data. But let's go to China, for example, which is an area probably Trump has tried to get the most credit of, uh, definitely when it comes to the idea of pressuring them internationally and him yeah. really taking them on aggressively. Soon. When it comes to China. Hey, he thanks for the follow, Danielle. Failure. Happy His to have trade you. Trade war failed. When it comes Welcome to the, to South, the community. Trying to see him taking credit for that. That policy of the South China Sea being defended was starting by the Obama administration. He has just continued the Obama administration's policy in the South China Sea. And when it comes to one of the biggest humanitarian crises of our generation, when it comes to the, uh, the uh, Uyghurs in Xinjiang province, he basically gave the concentration camps a thumb-ups and closed-door meetings. And later on, he basically said, I don't want to talk about them during the trade deal because it could hurt the trade deal. Putting a He's already on people dead! In camps. But he's not a he's not anyone new to concentration camps, any because he have them on our own southern border. But that's a domestic issue, so I'll try to keep that a, a, a little bit separate. Anyway, Donald Trump is the biggest national security threat to America. Point blank. Period. End of statement. I'm sorry. I it was a little bit of a rant. A little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But uh, uh, we love you anyway, buddy. Uh, thank you for that. That was actually quite interesting. He's mad. Um, this is this is real house. Hundred percent. Um, on the Kurds, definitely back you there. Um, all right, uh, so up to the floor. Uh, what do you all think? Um, Joe Biden versus uh, Trump. I want to hear more about the Iran uh, from Shadows. Why do you think Trump's Iran policy has been successful? Um, well, I, I don't think it's really been successful because I don't think, you know, we've seen enough. Of, we have had enough of it to see, you know, the, you know, full scale outcome. You know, mm. I feel like Max, mm. like his maximum pressure policy, we couldn't see the outcome of it uh, if we until we got another mm. four years, which, like I have said, I don't want to see anyway. Um, but I agree with that because the truth is um, Iran is by far and away the largest funder of terrorism from any state, uh, nation state that is. And I believe they should be treated the same way that the terrorists are. I think they should be treated the same as we treat Hezbollah and Hamas. Now, I will say it is weird that he was not willing to negotiate with Iran or be at the table with Iran, considering he, you know, was trying, he came to the table with Al Qaeda and tried to talk to their leaders to, um, you know, try and come up with a resolution and how to get out of um, Afghanistan. But, you know. What about the I Saudis? Would... Oh, Titan said it in chat. What about He's America? <laughs> We've... Let's not go there. Uh, wait a minute, why not go there? That's important. If we're going to be. <laughs> we should go there. If we're gonna, especially if we're going to be talking about the history of Warhawk presidents um, and other other careless, uh, you well, know, foreign I, I would like. 
to live like in the 2010s, not talk about the 60s and 70s. I think that's a very <laughs> different issue. Wait. Um, do you think oh, we've stopped? You talk about the 60s and 70s, but then you bring up Iran. You say you don't want to talk about that, but then you bring up Iran. But then, whatever. I'm just saying like Iran, you're saying like you're pointing out them. It seems like you're really point singling out them for some Yeah, well, but why not still, the 70s? I mean, if, if the if Saudis are fun, I mean, I've, I've remember said they killed before, the journalists. I don't know. I, I seem to remember that. Well, I, like, I show, like, that. like, yeah, there is that. And um, I've said before, I would be in favor of, you know, a large decoupling from Saudi Arabia. I think really the only benefit we get from that is possibly national security benefits to Israel, but it's really not for our national security benefit. We really don't need oil from the Middle East much. You anymore. said exporter of terrorism. The madrasas and the I, I said I said funder specifically, but okay. You I mean, think, you think I mean, Saudi Wahhabists don't fund uh, an export? I know they have fun. I know that they have Islam? funding ties to Al Qaeda. Okay, and I think that's a fair reason to you know not have a relationship with them. I don't know. Does anyone else think that's inconsistent? And I mean, I think it's Saudi really. Copy Especially because we're not sure. I mean, he didn't. I mean, he didn't. Shadows didn't explicitly like bring up right like the other other people. Like we did bring up the other countries. To be fair, but just like he just started to talk about like Iran first. Well, no, like, he did. He said he said the biggest exporter of terrorism. I mean, the there's biggest, some no, I said the biggest funder. The biggest the, funder. The biggest funder. Yeah. Yes. How do you how do you determine that number? How do you, how do you know that? Yeah. Well, because the the State Department actually has numbers on this and they only have four we'll countries. What metric? If it goes there, I will, Fuman. What's the metric? Metric? Like what's, what, what are you comparing? Comparing it to like other. How do you compare other... them? How do you know that this is the biggest exporter or funder of terrorism? What's the metric? Like... Uh, reading the Wikipedia article. This is Wikipedia. Okay. Of state sponsored terrorism. Um, people say that uh, Saudi Arabia is apparently listed as the largest one from what i can see I here i believe that's salafist terrorism mm, okay i so don't know it, just, it, it seems like a, a big statement to make i'm not saying it's not true but i would I'm like it to be substantiated i don't want it just to be substantiated on well the state department says they're a big threat i i mean i've seen state department and like other that's a good like, one right now i might steal that other groups um i don't yep, have any on hand yeah. i don't have it from the doc from when i debated dylan but i can certainly try and look for them well, regardless, would you concede that Saudi Arabia is a big exporter or funder of terrorism? Maybe not. Oh, this... oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 110%. And I think that is 100% legitimate to say that. So, why the two approaches? That... Wait, what? Why the two approaches? You have disparate propo uh, approaches. One in which it's extremely hard stance. You said borderline, like, I, I don't know why you don't want to invade Iran based on what you said. Well, um, the reason why is because um, I, I think, you know, the history behind behind the sunni shia divide and you know how um how much this has contributed to conflict in the region i think it's really important to point out and i also do believe that iran is primarily and by a wide margin the biggest threat to peace in the middle east um just because you think... say so what, what's no, the determination I, because of their funding of terrorist groups which you're unable to substantiate well, I, I will, I'm going to look for something. I think that, uh, I mean, I say this, uh, what's to stop me from saying the Saudis are the biggest contributor of terrorism. You can't debate me on that, can you? It's a question of fact. No, not have, yet. And, and, and some, somehow I think you're, you're, imagine that it's true that Iran has, you know, 10% more funding. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. Would that justify completely you know how goes. opposite foreign policy? postures one in which you're embraced in saudi arabia's you're making excuses for their acts you're not designating them on your muslim ban and the other in which you're castigating them and sanctioning them and treating them with you're assassinating the military leaders okay first of all i'm not in favor of a muslim ban the muslim ban is obviously unconstitutional wait wait wait, wait 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 hold on hold on you guys about to no talk. well he just made a few claims no, that no, no. i he did not say that he did not say that you were in favor he was just giving an example right like, it's like an idea but hold on yeah yeah i feel like yes, this, this is a problem really quickly yes. i don't know a lot about the topic but just from the conversation alone it sounds like you might be displaying a little bit of motivated reasoning and the reason why i'm saying that is because you're making a claim and you have literally nothing to substantiate the claim. True. And when someone's challenging you on it, I wonder what the hidden motivation could evidence be. Evidence to support this claim. Probably. That you've already accepted as fact. Probably. You yeah. have no evidence to support. Do you understand why that would seem like maybe you're not being completely him, yeah. objective here, and like maybe you might be a little biased, and there might be some motivated reasoning. 
Is that well, fair? I mean, yeah, and I, I'm not going to act like I'm completely unbiased. Like, obviously, I'm a secular Zionist, and I'm not a fan of the people who literally helped found and raise from the ground up the group that is, you know, Hezbollah. And well, we're supposed to be more right wingers originally, and, um, Hamas, and like they fire rockets into Israel. Like, you, th- I, I you think, think uh, was- Al Qaeda and Hamas are friends to the the Jewish the Jewish state? Al Qaeda? Oh, Al Qaeda as well. These are, these are Sunni groups. Well, are... just really quickly, but okay, so now that we've made this ground and we recognize that, like, right, and it's good that you're at least honest enough to admit that, and I, I appreciate that about you, then maybe instead of making the claims you're saying, you can still True, maintain gay your fish. argument. If only they could stop. Back a lot of those if things, only right? they like, could stop, but they can't. Like they just can't the stop saying gamer whatever words. Whatever it was that you were saying, or they fund the number one terrorism, right, which of course looks like maybe Saudi Arabia might be the one doing that, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day is if you have your reasonings right like and you can mm-hmm. say like you don't like the fact that they're bombing israel and you don't like whatever then those can be your arguments but you just you, once you're challenged on an idea and you recognize you have nothing to defend it it's better to just step back and say okay well here's my other arguments and these ones are a little bit better things that you know you can prove as opposed to just maintaining the back yeah I'm, I'm gonna i'm looking for numbers i mean you don't even I, you don't even tell me the direct numbers i, I want to know what's the metric is it is are, it would be in individuals it well, would be in dollars of what metric. There's no metric. He has nothing. He has nothing well, on. Is it dollars do, from? I said funding specifically. So obviously the from metric the state? would be U.S. dollars. No, no but, yeah, but right. is, it, is it from the state or is it from individuals in the state, nationals from Iran? No, it'd be from is the it... state specifically. This is how it goes okay. sometimes. Government actors talking. I'm talking about government actors funding terrorism. So well, it would be within, you know. But Pisco, don't ask him to enumerate something that you know he can't come. Well, no, no. Well, well, let me well, let me I, offer I let me offer a little bit of a of a of a of a, of a, a side thing. Let's make the assumption that Iran is the yeah. worst funder. Okay, let's go with that assumption. Do we really think that it's okay to to praise Trump's policy, which has been to tighten sanctions to an unbelievable degree? Um, on the people, which is going to affect the people of the country, regardless of their political affiliation, in the middle of a pandemic, which we know has led to mass death in the country. Is this something that we really want to stand by? And that's the thing. I mean, like, again, a lot of us don't seem to disagree. It kind of seems to be shadows on this one. Sorry if it seems like we're grilling you um, or anything, but I guess that's just how the panel panned out. Um, In this case, like, I I find it... I mean, but I expect... But I I feel like it's a little bit... um, it's a little bit troubling that you'd be willing to praise the actions of a guy who essentially took the, his thumb and crushed it down on the heads of already suffering people, um, even if you think that they that their military funds terrorism. Even if you think that's the case, why would it be okay for for the the presumably number one world power, the United States, to be to be that cruel in a, in such a way that affects the people more than anything else? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, our, the sanctions we put in place are pretty much null and void um, because they do very little. Like, we didn't trade very much with Iran, like, at all. It's mostly the Europeans that were trading with them. And by the way— But the we have a huge Europeans, influence over that. Yeah, but the Europeans didn't cave into us. Uh, okay, but they're also Is... not releasing funds and not releasing money that the, the state could use to help people. Right? Didn't we also like literally? Uh, didn't we also like stamp down um, d- like uh, like shipments of PPE to the country and funding of PPE? Didn't we like literally target that? I might be misremembering here, but I'm quite sure that that's the case. Uh, maybe Dylan can come in on this. Maybe I'm misremembering this part. Did we not like directly target medical supplies? Um, wasn't there like a huge, uh, a big study that was done that was put up by the UN that w- that was referring this that we actually stopped shipments of medical supplies going into Iran? Medical supplies, there was, there was, uh, I forget the exact specifics, but medical supplies were difficult to enter the state of Iran. And they were having problems that during the pandemic, they were unable to get the, many of the supplies that were necessary. Yeah. Being the number one power in the world, would we not bear some diplomatic responsibility for that? Would that not fall on Trump's shoulders? Uh, the U.S. was also pirating uh, PPE from um, the Caribbean nations. Hey, thank you uh, so just, much like, for the sub, Windleby. Deeply happened. appreciate that. Thank you um, so wow. much. Like these people who had no way of fighting back. Uh, the U.S. is taking the shipments, um, but anyway, I mean, I, I, yeah, I would not be in favor of that, and I would say for PPE, like you know, us trying to sanction or like you know, 
prevent the entry of that. I would say that that's a bit too far. I would agree on that. A bit but too I far? Was... That's heinous. Well, damning, damning citizens, people who have no choice that, you know, like, I mean, you, you're very, you're very open in your dislike of Iran, but I mean, surely it doesn't carry down to the, the average people. Enough. I feel like this should be enough. Like, it's weird that I have to imply that as a America loving secular Zionist, I hate the country of Iran, which is literally at a rallies that will burn American and Israeli flags and chant death to America, death to Wait, wait, wait. Like, so like what, what, wait a minute. What you're doing right now is you're not actually addressing the question. Right. Which you're talk we're talking about the people of Iran. I mean, clearly, I mean, I would hope that you're not like, like, nationalistically hating all of the people of Iran and holding them no. all responsible for the actions of, of state actors. When we no, are, I, I already said that I wouldn't, I'm not in favor of something like a Muslim ban. I totally disagree with Wait, that. Wait, but a ban it's is not what we're talking about. It. Address the question. Like you praised in your opening statement, you praised Donald Trump's approach it's towards awesome. Iran. I'm looking at um, specifically what happened. The broad U.S. economic sanctions resulting in severe international banking restrictions have drastically constricted the ability of the country to finance humanitarian imports, including medicines and medical equipment. So it doesn't seem like we – I don't know. I, I can't find specifics on like we actually went out there and said, you're not going to have masks. Ha, ha, ha. It would seem that because of the restrictions on international banking things, they just couldn't really like buy them. Yeah, but didn't like – I'm pretty sure Khomeini uh, came out and talked about how he had like – a set of rule, uh, a set of agreements he um, that he had if they were to stay within the um, joint comprehensive plan of action, and one of them was maintaining the relationships they had with. Hey, Hunter banks. Cruz, good to see you. Correct. What has been? What, what have we gotten for the the price? You acknowledge that there's some cost of the people, I suppose. It's okay. What hey, when you say when you, you say, say borderline genocidal things, you got to get schooled and, until another four years of Trump. That's how maybe. it goes. But and I know you don't part of the circle. Trump, or maybe you do. I, I don't know. I, I don't uh, want another four years. Okay. Yay! So, but in this particular policy realm, you much think love, Sudafan. That Iran Yay, bends the Sudo. knee and says you were right, Trump. Let's change our ways. What do you no, think? Not the the Trump, odds of that? I I do think I do think there is a possibility. Got to make more. That, hey, Fesh, know, gotta make more a tea. policy of maximum pressure if it was applied globally which is not going to happen which is why i acknowledge that it is mostly symbolic but i do appreciate the symbolism again as a patriotic okay wait, wait, wait. would you be in favor of invading the country of iran and installing a new government no i don't why think not? that would work why not i i think the change has to come from the people and iran is a very young country that has a chance of regime change on its own i do not okay. think it needs, you know, funding. Um, I don't think it needs a funded coup from the U.S. government. I don't think it requires a U.S. military troops. So, so presumably, because you think that the policy should be linked to it's Oof. what effects it has. It's all right, so it'll come. You got policy. plenty of time, Gay Fish. Get comfy. It's going to be ineffective. There's no use in going through it. So it sounds like what you're saying is there's some symbolism that I appreciate being strong well, in Iran. I love but... the symbolism, but okay, I but mean. What... Sure. Wait, but what's, wait, wait, what sort of symbolism are you talking about? You're talking about the. Do you think the people of Iran look more friendly upon America now than they did uh, or under Israel? Obama or or Israel for that? Yeah, that's true. And also, it's just it's something a little bit funny that you get mad about the symbolism of something like death to America, which specifically targets the state and not the people, not death to the American people, and yet you support symbolism from us that does directly target. The people of Iran, economic well, sanctions. Policy, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just symbolism; it's literally policy. It's policy that deliberately targets these people. I mean, I just feel like this is an incredibly cruel worldview. And I mean, I know, like, I know you you self-identify as a neolib, so maybe you're all right with some global cruelty stuff like that. But in my mind, like, the idea of starving out a people in the midst of a pandemic, after especially after Donald Trump cho chose to step back out of the Iran deal, which was making progress yeah. there, to me just seems like like needless cruelty it seems like madness cr level of cruelty well i would agree that in the midst of a pandemic that it is cruel and you know like that is not a policy that you know should be you know acted upon or continued upon but i would say before that you know this maximum pressure policy this idea of trying to clamp down on iran and trying to you know, restrict its economy as much as possible. I do think that could possibly- So starvation only matters during a pandemic? 
Well, no, it matters more. Okay. Well, but I, 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 I just oh, really don't say that, do Marinara. Like I'm happy you get out of bed. I hate theocracy. I hate it when it's in Iran. I hate it when it's in Saudi Arabia. I hate it when it's in our country. I despise theocracy. I don't. I hate it when it's in Israel. I hate it when it's in Israel. You know, I, I hate religious. I'm a huge secular, but it seems to be hugely hypocritical to, on the one hand, support Trump's policy with Iran, got him in a strong stance because you know terror they fund terrorism, but stay silent with respect to Saudi Arabia, which I I, have, I don't know if I have to remind you is a huge. Uh, I don't know if the state is certainly some members of the family oh, are. Oh God, um, supporter of terrorism across the globe. Is that yeah. hypocritical? Shouldn't I mean, you say? I and isn't it hypocritical as to China, which Dylan Burns brought up? You know, this is a country that is essentially affecting a uh, genocide on a, a huge amount of people in that country. Why shouldn't we have a strong stance against China saying, you know, we don't trade with you until you stop that genocide? Well, I mean, we, we can get into like trade in China. That's true, and, like, My stance on that, if you want to shift over to that, but that, that's like kind of a shift. Yeah, but, thing but, actually, no, well, look, let me, let me jump on this. Actually, I want to, I want to, Pisco, get, hand me the ball. Hand me the ball here. Yeah. Pass it. Pass it over. Pass it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to do a full court press. So, um. This is a wild debate so far. Let me ask you something. Do you acknowledge that right now China has uh, around 1 million Uyghurs in concentration camps? Yes. Okay. So that's undeniable. Yes. Okay. Well, anyone who would deny it would be considered a piece of shit, right? I, I would say tanky specifically, but sure. Okay. Piece of shit. So. I mean, they're synonymous anyway. I think all communists are pieces of shit. Look. Ooh. So when it comes to. This is why that, I don't give a shit. Why would you have such a, a stance of uncompromising? We're not going to negotiate with them. We're going to I think I think he's fine. I'll are give him that much. Garbage. We're going to. They're the greatest response. Like, I don't sure, like his takes, but I think he's fine. This negotiation whatsoever. He's brave. But I'll give him that much. When it comes to the state that currently is operating concentration camps, well, you know, international diplomacy says, and when you look at like how much weight they have on the international. Oh, economy, of course, of course. Hey, and, welcome I mean, to the fold, we're, Rolling we're, Bear. Thanks for following. Hope you have a great like, time. We do not trade with China. Thanks we for joining. Try to play sanctions on China. Oh, of course it is, Can of Witchery. I mean, and that's a valuable that. thing. Now, we both know that's impossible. We couldn't. No other country would come with us to do that. They're too, mm -hmm. they're too large of a piece true, of... True, Gayfesh, true. Community. But the symbolism would mean a lot, wouldn't it, if we just started to try to sanction China? Eh, not wouldn't really. I mean, These the things will get forgotten. Matters. I mean... It's ineffective, think... but symbolism. Most I mean... of these things will be forgotten. I mean, yeah, but I think I don't think it would actually accomplish anything except for taxing the American consumer. There you go. Well, that is not. I don't think the Iran, this tough on Iran thing, is accomplishing anything. I, well, it actually accomplishes less. But okay, so you should be against so, it. So why, why, why would you not want to negotiate with them at the very least, to go for something like the JCPOA and find compromises Oof. with them? Because we oh. know the status quo wasn't working. Same way with Cuba. I don't think example. Peacecraft is a garbage person. I think Peacecraft okay, because, uh, like has some said, oversights. But I don't have think he's a garbage do with person. Me I like agreeing with the ideology of the country or their human rights violations. Nah, this has to do with yes, the fact man. that they fund in your terrorists. in your in your dreams. And I think we should treat them like the terrorist groups they fund. And in your I dreams. Say, I would say generally ninety nine point nine. Nobody of the owns time, me. Do not negotiate with terrorists. Is terrorism worse than so, genocide? No. <laughs> what's what's worse? What's actually, yeah, you, man, me and Pisco on the same wavelength yeah. here. Yeah, what's worse, genocide? Oh, oh wait, true, you kind of do in genocide, a certain way, or, yeah. Or like, what, what, what makes terrorism the special evil that puts it above all other evils to the point where we can't even negotiate <laughs> with them? I have a good. Oh, wait, I have a quick question. Do you think we should treat um, Saudi Arabia the same way we treat Iran? I'd be fine with that, honestly. Okay. Just, I don't think. Go, go, I, go on with your other questions. Go ahead. Sorry. Um. I don't think he's a landlord. I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a I lot think of he's a property owner. I just don't think he's a landlord. I think he One just owns a second house. Terrorism, undoubtedly. Oh, thank awful. you, Hunter Cruz. I think so, too. The thank you. Terms, so should genocide. I don't know why. I got my can, own style. You know, weigh those two and say one is worse and deserves our, a fuller, more well Well, I think it's the way. I think it's the fact that when something is like an actual, like, legitimate government versus a non-state Oh, Mindwaves is here. Sick. Would be... 
you know, something like ISIS or Al Qaeda or Hamas. I feel like the treatment is so disparate that if a country does decide to go down the route of funding terrorism, I think it is, I think it is fair to say they should be treated like the groups they fund. What if it's a little funding in terrorism versus like a big state Ooh, sanction? Ooh, marinara. Ooh, that hurts. Yikes. Maybe like I, I don't know why you think that funding of non-state actors is worse than express state action. Well, I my thing is I think there should not be a difference in treatment at all. My problem is the disparate treatment. Okay, so to be consistent, to be consistent, we sanction and embargo or do whatever you want to do to China, just the same way we do it to Saudi Arabia, just the same way we do it to Iran. That, you have to say yeah. that to be consistent. Well, I would say I would say for the sake of consistency when it comes to talking about state state sponsors of terrorism, yes, we do have to sanction Saudi Arabia and treat them the same. Good idea. Which, honestly, Minecraft is fun. I would love to see one day, and I hope we can see that one day, actually, because I do mm. generally feel like our relationship with Saudi Arabia, for the most part, is like a relic of the Cold War. Oh, we're gonna get I last username in there's here. There's nearly as much benefit to it as there was with our with our relationship back then okay so i i find this this conversation to be kind of kind of weird kind of ridiculous um this idea that it's know, good though we'll get somebody else to beat I on instead of shadows in foreign affairs right but we can't stand here and pretend that iran is doing the 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 special evil which is unnegotiable with um, Saudi Arabia is also doing the special evil that's non negotiable with, and we're just not going to talk to them because they're just super bad. And let's cross our arms, fold them, and not work with them because they sponsor terrorism. Aww. Right? Because then let me ask you another Enjoy question. Enjoy, Meepom. Um, if you, I hope How your migraine Pakistan? feels better. I get right. migraines Pakistan. occasionally as well. Uh, I mean, Turkey is a member of NATO. Hope you rest and well. I would say that the groups they're backing in northeastern Syria that drag Kurds out of cars, politicians, and shoot them on the side of the road. Road, I would say that's pretty terroristy to me. You know, oh, I, you know I would say I mean, that's pretty terroristy to me. And you know what? I do, yeah. I think you and me probably agree on maybe pressuring uh, Erdogan, possibly even kick, maybe you even think that Turkey should be kicked out of NATO. But do you I, think I they do. should be I actually, similarly to Iran? Do you think I we actually, should sanction them? Do you think we should sanction Turkey? Okay, so I will say I actually do agree on that. I've, sa I've said multiple times before, and I'll say it again. I think we should be kicking nerdy Turkey out of Oh my god, I'm mixing my like letters up here. I think okay. we should uh, kick Turkey out of NATO as soon as possible and replace them with Nurki Ukraine, out of NATO. which I feel like you know is you know they need our defense and you know a commitment so you, from European. But will you sanction them? Do you want to sanction Turkey? Uh, to the same extent, possibly. Of too. Possibly. Okay, so what we basically cross. Okay, let's go through all these lists. Okay, so. Uh, we got to cut off all ties with I'm Iran. Well, actually, say, well, let's go on. through all these lists. Let's go through all the lists of the standards. Well, brother. actually, gonna... like, I'm thinking about Couldn't it. Couldn't we also like, bring up Israel my, here? My thing is um, it's different um, because, like, I mean, I'm aware of what Turkey does and what they've done with Kurdish politicians. And I think it's very different from funding terrorists when the government is just being terrorists itself. Like, well, that's worse. There's a that massive worse, difference there. Right? Isn't it yeah, worse? Yeah, I the... do. I, I do think it's worse. And I think, so, you know, things like what well, China is doing, like with the Uyghurs and, the, you know, what Turkey does with Kurds, I think because of that, it's... Uh, yeah, I when think, I get migraines, you know, I get really nauseous. Policy. My I, I vision never said tunnels. That, like, the militias they're sponsoring and I get Northeast really light sensitive, like crazy. Kurdish politicians or, or have committed multiple war crimes, over 150 documented war crimes. I can bring out recent UN reports that I've downloaded on my computer, I can send you that have documented the war crimes committed by these groups. Now, I would say that's pretty terroristy, right? My my point eventually Wait. is to go through. Just to clarify, you, just to clarify, you said they're funding groups that are committing these war they, crimes. They are actively supplying them to go across the border and kill people in northeastern uh -oh. Syria. Okay, I would uh, yes, I would I would agree. I would say that they should be classified as state funders of terrorism for doing such. And so we sanction them, we cut off all ties, we have no negotiation, we don't talk to them. They we we isolate them like this, right? And let me ask you a question. If it's ever found that the United States is currently sponsoring a group <laughs> that is considered a terrorist organization by other countries, should yeah. the world sanction us? No, you don't. You don't understand, Dylan. It's our standards that govern the whole world. My, and if 
if they want to sanction us for our immigration policy, they're not, I mean, they're not in their power to do so because we're obviously the best and we know the standards and, and we have the right answer. Oh, I'm so that sorry, right? wait, 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 I feel you on that. Ice? Wait, no, 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 wait, let, let, let Shadows answer the question because I think it was a really great question. Taylor, can you ask that one more time? And I want to so, hear the Shadows. If it, if it is found that currently, I'm not talking like the context, yeah, I agree. right? I'm talking about today, right? Mm -hmm. It is found that we threw, not like Timber Sycamore, Sycamore because that's over, but we, we sue some new thing. We're funding some terror group or something that's considered a terror group. Hell, actually, when you think about it, Turkey would consider the YPG a terror group, wouldn't they? They do consider it a terror group. They think of it actually as a branch of the PKK. It's a ridiculous standard, you and I agree. But does that mean Turkey should just be like America? We consider that a terror group. Therefore, we're cutting off all ties and we're sanctioning you. I don't think they have the military capital necessary to Should do they, that. Though? That's, that's Should they, though? Should they? What about the symbolism? What about the? Wait, wait, wait. They'll do it for symbolic reasons. Wait, one second, remember one second, Dylan. I, I think you, they were asking a question, and I feel like you guys are kind of getting off the road. I just want to hear his response to that question. Okay. You were asking. I'll, ask, I'll, ask, I'll, I'll ask it specifically, even from the Turkish example. So, if it was found tomorrow that America is funding a terror group, whatever it may be, say may say it be Al Nusra, Al Qaeda. Uh, whatever, wherever in wherever in the Middle East, mm -hmm. should the world cut off ties with America and then sanction America to high hell? The same way we have done to Iran. I mean, as an American, my personal answer would be no. But if a, other countries want to do that, I'd say that they're, it's up to them and they can make that decision. Wait, no, 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 if, no, no, wait. And if wait, like wait. our European allies do that, then... We're not talking they about people's that. ability to make that decision. Yeah. That's the right. question. He didn't ask, can they? He asks, should they? Yeah, and should they is very different. Do you think that that is what should happen? Should they do it? Is that the smart thing for them to do? Is that the right thing for them to do? Morally, should they do it? Morally, I would say yes, but is it a is it the is it a good idea? No, obviously. Why is it okay. a bad idea? Let, let me let me let me take it. Let me take this across the border. I got this. So it is bad for strategic reasons because of America's big muscles, right? Because we're yeah. a big boy. And okay, so if I came to you and was like, okay, I acknowledge that Iran funds Khatib Hezbollah. I acknowledge that Iran funds just normal Hezbollah. I acknowledge that we are engaged in multiple proxy conflicts, whether it be the Houthi rebels in Yemen or whatever, all these things. And we are geopolitical foes. But we have a objective of stopping them from achieving a nuclear weapon. The sanction thing can go everywhere. And yeah, this is I'm wild. I'm willing for strategic this reasons. This is actually wild. And for the reasons of compromise, I am willing to compromise on some of these sanctions to get this deal through to stop the state from getting nuclear weapons, for example. Right? And that's actually negotiating with them based on strategic reasons because it doesn't make sense not to talk to them when there's such a staple of Middle East politics. Yeah, build a mountain base. Those are cool. I would say I would say when it comes to something like the JCPOA, um I think that we should actually be taking a back seat there and we should be um you know on the side of our Israeli allies cuz I do believe that you know when it comes to stopping Iran from getting a nuke I think that is more of an issue for our Middle Eastern allies to address, because it is no. it, it is it is it is a more of a threat to them. You can't believe that. You think that uh, the acquiring a nuclear missile or a nuclear weapon from Iran mostly implicates only the states around it? It would be a huge implication of American geopolitical interests. Huge, right? Iran happens to be somewhat close to a country you care very deeply about well yes but that i'm that's what i'm saying it's because of our allies that it has large implications if we were an isolationist isolationist country we would have a, actually a pretty small one really we you think, think a nuclear weapon detonating somewhere in the middle east would not implicate the would be the biggest in isolationist threat. america no it would not implicate okay. in isolationist america. so so there's this thing you've been pushing this idea that the middle east like like our reliance on that was not nearly as it used to be. I will say that we are energy independent now. But as we saw from the conflict between Russia and Saudi Arabia when it came to oil prices, because the, this because is a little like, beyond okay, my wheelhouse, even agreement with Russia. 
that I don't I don't even know where he's going right now. I think he's floundering. The American fracking industry and actually showed that global oil prices and conflicts they can have in our relationship to them does still matter when it comes to the energy sector. It's not maybe not to the same extent okay. as it did yeah. on Jimmy Carter, but it still does. So our relationship pretty complicated, with these yeah. nations and the not if you listen to Prager you important to America's direct interest when it comes to the energy sector. Not That's okay. Don't worry. Ties we have them with the new areas, topic example, will begin like, very soon, know, like WWE or whatever. Um, okay, I mean, I, I would say that's fair. It does affect the global economy. That's something I forgot to factor in, so I will concede that point. It's a risk. So yeah. I would say that nuclear weapons being more dispersed across the Middle East, definitely in the hands of what you would assume be, a, in your words, a theocratic, monstrous regime getting a nuclear yeah, a weapon. A terrorist state is what I would yeah, call well, them, because that's an accurate label. The devil itself, we don't. It bad. We all we all agree it's bad in whatever way. We okay, agree. Iran man bad, sure. Iran man bad. Them getting a nuke is bad. So maybe cooperating with them. I mean, to true. A extent, to we need a reinvestment in alternative energy position for us and for our allies in the region that is safer for every party involved is good, and it would make sense for us to talk to them. Yes, especially if doing the alternative, which is Trump's policy, gets us nothing, right? I have, to, you... uh, I have to ask a question here to, to just to the, the report we're all this is going to sound like a so I've been thinking about this a long time I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a brainlet when it comes to like foreign policy and everything so like let's say that like a country like Iran gets a nuke right like are they just going to shoot it at somebody maybe not but it's a huge I amount know. I mean look at the, the range of options that are available for us to deal with North Korea part of the reason we're so limited is because they have nukes and it's a threat but, like, I mean, Regime. Like even if even if they didn't oh. have nukes, hold on. Even if they didn't have nukes, they could do a hell of a lot to to, to like South Korea right next to them without nukes. They don't even need. Yeah. Well, even yeah. The, 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 the nuclear explosion increased or decrease if more states have them. The chances, it would have to increase. Yes, okay. that would be that. I forget what this is called. This is called something. There's a, there's okay. a term for this. Doomsday clock, I think. Yeah, so not even. No, no, no. What he's specifically saying. The yeah. risk is is unbearable, right? So even a small risk of a nuke going up is horrible. So, ipso facto, if we just – no more states should have nukes. Yeah, right? fracking has extreme yeah, no limits. More, but, but that's not okay. going to happen. Well, okay. So, let me, let, me, let me put it this way. Let's say we're – me and you Fracking say, is also we, incredibly we polluting. We about mint chocolate chip being the best ice cream flavor. You had the wrong opinion said it wasn't. And, and, <laughs> oh, God. We're going back to – Fucking and, shit, and, by and, the way. Yeah, terrible. Worst position. And let's say that you wanted to respond to me in a certain manner, right? And before, I used to only have a pistol, which that's pretty dangerous, right? But, like, mm. if I take maybe a pistol shot, I think I could survive that, right? And so maybe you'd have a more – like, you'd be more willing to take certain risky actions against me. But let's say then you replace that with I had a literal fucking bazooka. Like, if I shoot at you and hit within, I don't know, 100 feet, you're dead. Well, you, I don't know hey, if it's Hey, I'm sure you got standing ground law. I'm sure it's legal. It's fine. But you would acknowledge there. You Mint chocolate chip is very good. I wouldn't say my, the best, but it's quite good. Or, or maneuver with me because now the force behind me is 10 times more. And you would be less willing to maneuver. And not to mention the fact, and this, this is not a thing that applies. But what is maneuver? I'm sorry. This is a hard, this is a strange analogy here. Like when you say maneuver, right? For example, like. Like, For example, let cyber attacks against the Iranian uh, home homeland it would not be would be something that'd be a lot more risky to do. For example, because the Israeli um, Mossad has been doing cyber attacks across Iran for the last few months for a lot. Well, a, accused it was is Israel, but even like I think everybody here, who well okay, um, maybe me and Shadows everybody both here. know. Me and Shadows both know that that the, the cyber attacks are most certainly coming yeah. from the Israeli Mossad. Yeah, those things insane. like that that option wouldn't be on the table anymore the wait this is option, a, this, why is that why is that an option why why, why doesn't Israel because that's not, something that they're doing i do like chocolate chip to cookie dough too things like actually the israeli nuclear program here's another thing that was on the table before that they were willing to do they were talk to president barack obama about doing a direct strike on israel itself right and obama ended up shooting that down and ended up doing the jcpoa instead but that was something they wanted to do to actually disable the Iranian nuclear program. There's a lot of or things like the I think Soleimani he I think he said killings, Israel and not Iran. Not in favor of that would be less options on the table. And let's say you look at all these, and maybe I would say and I agree with you. On yeah, this, I think he misspoke. Those are all bad things, aren't they? 
right? You, for whatever reason, you might think those are all bad things. Cool, but the threat of those Maricone dream is good. Can I like the midnight snack one with the chips. State. I and love that shit. State has much bigger muscles, they'd be willing to take much bigger risks in engaging with others. And there's also the yeah, Dylan's really impressive. That comes with nuclear weapons. He's really great. Fact, though, smart, smart ass guy. We have come so close to all just blowing up on so many different Legume occasions. Flavor? There was instances during the Iraq, the, during the oh, Cuban you mean like pistachios? Where mm. it was literally it's one pistachio person legume? stopping. The Thought whole it was a nut. Up, where yeah, in, mm. where I saw, I saw the Ed Plemon video too. Yep. Yeah, the Soviet nuclear submarine. Two yeah. people approved. One person denied it, and that one person saved the world. Or a how many a legume? nuclear weapons we've just lost? Um, oh, not to mention oh, what nuclear the fuck? weapons in I'm the hands confused. of dictatorships to me are a lot scarier due to like I feel like the fact that I'm confused or, or theocratic or authoritarian sure it's a nut. regimes. I think it's more dangerous generally because well, like, I like power nuts. balances and definitely I a like nation that's under international pressure and peanuts are a legume. Huh, they, I didn't know that. It's just really risky, and I think the more countries have nukes, the more that more countries have nukes, the more risks. Oh that are on no, the table. that's terrible. I mean, people. imagine Saddam had nukes during the Iraq War. I mean, you have so to. It's like, well, well, then there wouldn't have been an Iraq like war, at least right. not on the original yeah. side, right? I mean, like, then it just yeah. wouldn't have happened. But you know, that's I, not that's not true, sick. We don't know that. In the we traditional, don't. I mean, like in the sense that we did, we it, don't, right? we, we we don't know because the problem is, um, there's a lot of time and a lot of room for accidents and accident. Mo uh, most wars are start it started a lot of time. Uh, well, I would say a lot of wars are started due to miscalculation, someone over predicting how much power they have, thinking something was something else when it really wasn't. Starting um, a land war with Russia. You know, she's like, yeah, here's a great example. Iran shot down their own civilian jetliner, right? And that's that's yeah. a pretty big mistake when you shoot down your own civilian jetliner. And if they were able to do that, maybe they could shoot down a plane like that they thought too. was in their waters, but actually was a few miles outside their waters, start a conflict that spirals out of control, and now two nuclear-armed powers, when before one might have only been nuclear, now two nuclear armed powers are in international conflict that could spiral out and we have no clue what could go from there, right? Now, each of these scenarios, the likelihood of it yeah, spiraling out to nuclear war are low, but once you add more nuclear players, the odds of that happening does increase. Yeah, this this feels like, like I, I, I understand this argument to an extent. When we talk about like keeping specific countries from getting specific other things, it feels like just keeping other countries weak so that we can be, we can have like power over them. Now, I'm not saying that Iran's like this nice country that like, you know, should, shouldn't be stopped or something. Fuck that. Fuck those guys. I mean, the government, I mean, <laughs> but I'm saying that like, you know, like uh, when you talk about like this certain country shouldn't have this, this certain country shouldn't have that. And like we're the arbiters of this, right? We have our own self-interest. The government of us, we have our own interests and our own things to do. So it seems like it's more about like, you know, maintaining our power in a region, right? Rather than, you know, um, making sure That's people not. you don't. What you say? It's not. Would you, would you rather live in a world in which every country has a nuclear weapon, or would you rather live in a world where some countries have nuclear weapons? See, like, I to me, I think both of these things are really bad. Like, this idea of some, it depends on which countries in the some countries, it depends on which countries have the nuclear weapons, right? Because if we had lived in a world where like some countries had nuclear weapons, but those countries were fucking horrible countries. I mean, we're we're right? the only one that's I, ever used it, right? Exactly. I potentially would want the more. I want every country have a nuclear weapon. Oh, as as opposed to some of what you want to do. Okay. So, I mean, so, I agree. So with look that. how many mistakes have happened when only what seven to nine countries have had nukes, and how close we've come to nuclear war. Now make it 196 countries with nuclear weapons. You really want to risk people? Literally, well, like, imagine world. Armenia and Azerbaijan with nukes right now. Would that oh, would that Jesus make you feel Christ. safer or scared? Would Jesus that make, Christ, no. Would that make you feel safer? Because well maybe they won't be uh, less likely to get you. I mean, I would say the the likelihood of them going to direct land for, low land, direct land for is is probably a little bit is less likely. But if it does happen, the the results are neither. so much disaster. So much disaster. Is worth it. It's worth it. The price we it's, pay for American imperialism is worth not having that scenario. Really? Okay, cool. It's 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 one of those things where I'm not gonna say that like you guys. I mean, you guys, I feel like you know a lot a bit more about this than I do here. But this is always this question that I've had in my head of just like. If I'm thinking in my head like, huh, you know, if this guy's got a nuke and I've got a nuke, I'm not going to want to attack them because they'll kill me, right? So, you know, you talk about the whole thing with the Cold War. It's just like, okay, that's kind of well, what that was, right? another thing. Okay. Let's say. Oh, like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Thank every, you. Okay, I totally so forgot to do that. sounds like, well, if everybody has a gun, then people will, mm. you know, not shoot each other. <laughs> so, um, I'm a little. We'll do it this, uh, this way this time. You said 
the price of American imperialism is worth uh, not having the situation in Azerbaijan and um, I've not been to that Armenia, one, Rakhine. Um, both having nukes and uh, trading in at each other. Um, I feel like you're setting up a false dichotomy there, though, right? Um, that like that, like the this scenario, our current scenario, um, and that other scenario where everyone has the nukes, right? Those aren't the only two options here, right? And we can imagine a world where um, we don't have American imperialism and we still have a, a, a limited number of countries yeah. with nuclear weapons. That's correct. So it's it's a false dichotomy in the sense that, you know, it's, it's not necessary to imagine a world in which widespread American imperialism um, is coupled with proliferation of nuclear weapons. You, you could have one without the other. I'm just saying the, if you were if you gave me a choice between the two, I'd rather have American, Russian, Chinese imperialism all counteracting in this kind of small polar world as opposed to a 196 polar world in which no one knows when the next nuclear slip up is going to happen well but here there's there's something i want to address with that which is a bias Mm -hmm. and i can understand why you would say you would want that because i mean you live in the united states so for anyone living in the united states or in a nuclear empowered nation it's great to say, yeah, I would love to only have it my nation, that nation, this nation have the nukes. But if you're not, if you're in a place that could be nuked with no repercussions, if you get nuked off the planet, you're just gone. And if you don't have – so so for those people, for everyone else, that is not the ideal world because it could be your country that gets to be the testing ground, like Japan was, for a nuke. Yeah. Well, okay, so that's not necessarily true. There's a reason why it was only Japan that was nuked. There's a reason why it was only Japan and nobody it's else. It's because we wanted to end the war sooner. No, I well, mean, wait, no, let's, well, no, let's, no, let's... Let me let's... finish. Let me finish. The reason okay. why is because then shortly after, everybody else got nukes, right? And then the idea of us nuking anybody else in the Soviet bloc would be like, well, fuck, what if they respond with nuke, right? And then what happened is that people ended up joining other power blocks. And we also didn't want to normalize... Um, the idea of nuking just so easily once everybody else had nukes. When he had nukes, it was like whatever. But then when everybody when, when another power had nukes, it was like fuck. Now we don't want to normalize it because then what if they do one against one of our boys? And that's why throughout one of the most rapid period of nuclearization in history, nobody else was nuked, and the only nuke that was ever used was the first one against Japan. Two. Once everybody the else first, got nukes, first two. Oh, the first two was the first two against Japan, and then once everybody else got nukes, it was like. Well, not everybody, but once the other big powers got nukes, people joined the powers or they joined the non-aligned movement, and no more nukes ended up being used. Now, threats were, of course, thrown, but it was due to power alignment and the risk factor. Like, this idea of, like— I hate that line, too, but— We get nuked and fuck. We'll, right? we'll Now you're saying that but some nations will get no repercussions. Um, I could see a scenario where somebody politically isolates themselves to the point where they could be like, well, if we nuke them, nobody cares— but even then, there would still be the backlash for, like, but then are we normalizing the use of nuclear weapons? Yeah, but but, but you have to keep in mind that from the from the perspective of the people who could be turned into glass overnight, that doesn't matter. Like, they don't care if they get sanctioned afterwards, and nor does the people who decide to finally drop a nuke. I mean, I think that, that, that it, it is feasible for us to imagine that some country drops a nuke in the future and relies on the fact that the rest of the, the planet doesn't want to mutually assured destruct themselves um and both big bigger countries will just say well it sucks that that place got nuked but it's this them the, not us wait, this is the kevin castley argument what actually. do you mean you know kevin castley i don't know who that is he is a he is a uh, neocon online who believes that we should nuke north korea and iran and russia now his now the logic behind him uh, what he says is basically the idea that well, if we wait long enough and we wait too long, North Korea will eventually use these weapons against South Korea and we would be too scared to do anything to stop them because then it could devolve into nuclear annihilation for everybody, right? And the idea is that if we strike first, everybody else will just fucking back down. And the thing is, the problem is we don't know that because then there's also the fact that if you back That's down not what I was saying at all. you've been nuked or one of your allies have been nuked, then you're like, fuck then they'll just keep doing it number one and all of our concessions all of our everything we own is basically up for grabs now because we're not willing to take that stand except yet. that wasn't the argument i was making at all my argument is saying that there are people who think that way my 
my point well, is to point out well, to you that there are people who who process the way that this person that you're bringing up, and also that it is feasible, it is imaginable that somebody in the world could come to that conclusion. And what I would say is that we that mm. knowing that we should have understanding for the position as you know, being that none of us are well, perhaps maybe you, but none of us are here in government, and we're not making these decisions. But as activists, as people who are pushing for a better better world, we should absolutely understand the position of nations that aren't currently nuclear enabled, in understanding that they know at any moment that if it if they if a country really wanted to, they could destroy them, and there's a pretty small chance of it actually resulting in mutually assured destruction if they don't have nukes. And what this creates is this creates a perverse incentive for the entire world, every single individual nation, the only logical conclusion for that nation in their own self-interest, if we can step out of America's shoes for a second, um, is, is, to, is to speed towards nuclear armament. This or else— would This would make sense if we didn't have the Cold War, though. <laughs> Okay, I, I actually want to. How does it not? How does the Cold War not? How does the Cold War change because anything? You yourself said that it was only it was only the armament, the nuclear armament of the world that prevented yeah, America from further nukes. Of how many powers? Like seven. There was anyone three, that was capable, though. That's a roll of the dice. Can I ask my question? Shadow. One second. I want Dylan to respond, and then I'm going to go to Shadow, and then Fanatic. Dylan. There was like there was France, there was Britain, there was America, there was the Soviet Union, um, and eventually there was China. But when we really look at the vast majority of countries, most countries didn't just pick up nukes. Some tried to pursue them, but most of those nuclear programs failed. And yet there was only five countries and a lot of countries without nukes that we didn't like and a lot of wars that we fought. Vietnam. There was the Vietnam War, there was the Korean War, and the Korean no, War Dylan's was actually the this. one period of time where we had the option of nukes, and it was being seriously considered by people like Douglas MacArthur, and we actually turned it down. The president of the United States at the time turned it down, and shortly after, you know, other people got nukes because the, the one of the main reasons was because of this normalization policy. But throughout the whole Cold War, we got all these proxy conflicts, all these opportunities where us nuking a nation like Vietnam would kind of removed a big problem for us when it comes to the Vietnamese being becoming uh, communist and starting the domino effect, but it didn't happen. And the main reason why was not wanting to normalize this policy and not wanting to um, basically have a counter strike on some instance on one of our allies. Because we nuke Vietnam, Soviet Union is like, maybe we don't nuke America directly. Maybe we nuke South Korea. Okay, but, but you're... And now I understand that there could be people who think this, like you said, but... Okay, but wait, wait, but, but your argument, your argument for this should have, if if what you're saying is true, is that all it took was one other person basically getting nukes in order to stop anybody from using nukes, then it would have made sense that everybody just it became a perfect polar world where France wouldn't need them, Britain wouldn't need them, India wouldn't need them, any of these other nuclear nations didn't need to, but all of these nations had an attempt at a nuclear program unless they unless they chose to align with another nuclear power. So there is a problem here, which is. Is that your choice in the current world as it stands and again we have to step out of the america shoes for a second here and go if you are an, if you're another nation that doesn't perfectly align with russia china uk france and america then your option is either buddy buddy up and and sort of bow down and kiss the boots of another nation that has nuclear power or you get it for yourself and that is a guaranteed ticket that nobody will fuck with you in that way. So until we address that perverse incentive, how could you ever blame any country for pursuing nuclear? Uh, we want a hierarchy, right? What's that? We want, we want some states. We don't want a state a state of the world where everyone is equal power in this world. Correct? Uh, I excuse I, me. I, I mean, I, 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 I that's not a take I be, hate. You want everyone to be the same level of power? I would love I it if all humans on the planet were on well, an even okay, level of power. Is, absolutely. I would love that. Okay, this, that's a, that'd be this, great. World, actually, that's a, that's yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, of okay, course. This actually, okay, so, Sorry, I don't believe this, in like natural hierarchies that just because you beat you, you beat the world to nuclear power that you therefore have a right to dominate the world. That's like a that's a that, sickening view world nine. worldview. I so I would I don't want a I want a bipolar world or unipolar world. I don't want worlds where everyone is competing. Wait a minute. Why don't we aim for a world that doesn't have that, where we don't have any, the entire world dominated because of nuclear power? And here's the thing. 
the world that you're that you're defending at the moment is one that demands that every small nation that doesn't want to become a vassal to another larger imperialist nation must I don't, want, I don't want world wars and atomic conflict well guess what what the world is going towards right now is that so you have to come up with a better argument than i want my country that i happen to because of a role the dice have been born into <laughs> Well, wait, you, you're literally, this is literally an argument from privilege. You're saying, I'm, I sure am happy that I happen to live in the United States. It's literally an argument from privilege. So I want to hear uh, from Shadows and then- uh, Okay, so I have two points I want to make and I'm kind of glad we got that because that kind of goes to my point I was going to make because I like I know a lot of people had like, you know, a visceral reaction to what Sig said, but like to defend the dude here, like- you're I welcome. Totally get That's why, why they bring me here. Is, from an American, that's why they bring me the here. Perspective of an American, you know, when you live in a country that is a nuclear power, and you have a lot of countries that are nuclear powers aligned with you. Sorry, I'll make him more mad. That. Watch this. Um, and you know, you have a lot of countries that are aligned with other nuclear powers. You know, you and the idea of every country getting a nuke uh, is not I'm not wrong at all. I'm, I'm very sure on you this. Think of it from a very selfish and self-centered perspective. You might actually expect a more peaceful world where there's going to be less chances of conflict because everyone has a nuke and no one wants to fuck with someone who has a nuke. You, because, really, you, know, think that? you really think that? Wait a minute. No, I, Wait, I hold on. That, but I can get, like I can, uh, what I'm saying is I can get that thought process. And then my second point I want to make is, you know, because a lot of this has been centered around, you know, my views on Iran and like this Iran conversation is that if I were S Secretary of State, this is how Weird. I would it's almost know, like they do to address this issue. I would give, I would, um, well, we probably have to first, um, like ask, uh, we first have to, uh, contract more UAEs, UAVs built, but, um, you know, I would send UAVs over to Israel and some Gulf allies and say, you know, we understand that the possibility of a nuclear, and this is like back before the JCPOA or any of that, my policy would have been, we give these UAVs, these drones to our Gulf allies and to Israel and say, hey, we understand- I always find a way to get out we, their beliefs. We understand- You know that, I'm good at that. possibility of a nuclear Iran. We are going to give you guys these super high-tech, state-of-the-art UAVs so you can fly them over. Oh, I haven't even seen that to news yet today, Hunter Cruz. To it's not good though. To see, not if good for us. You think they might be building centrifuges and whatever response you three or four countries agree on, depending, you know, which countries we send them to and how many they are. I would probably do probably the ones we have in the uh, recent agreement with Israel. So it'd be Israel, UAE, Bahrain, and I'd probably add Qatar. Um, I would say these four countries, you give them UAVs, say, monitor what's going on there. We want to help you come up with a response. You guys Cutter. have yeah, this I think that's unified how it said. group. You guys come up with a way Cutter. you want to respond to the threat of a wrong. nuclear Iran, and we will help you reach that. And there's a possibility that they fly UAVs over and they say, Yeah, it oh, is. Shit. It's Qatar. You see this shit is what some people, how some people say, Qatar. Construction. And it looks like these might be centrifuges and holy fuck, they might actually be building a nuke. We need to do something about this now. And maybe what they would want so I've heard. would actually be something that looks like the JCPOA. A bit war torn right now, though, if that was I the case, it. Then I would totally change my opinion on the JCPOA like that. But I'm like, I'm completely, because my thing is, I think the threat of a nuclear Iran is not only an impact on us and a global impact, but because Iran is such a big threat to peace in the Middle East, I want us to have a unified response with our, you know, Middle Eastern allies and how to respond to this. I thought you so, said it was only gonna be a local effect and that it would only matter to I, I said in the hypothetical of an isolated America. Obviously, oh, so... obviously if Iran becomes nuclear, in a current world, it's not going to be a localized effect. Sorry. I already said that. Sorry, fanatic. Make, make your comment. We we're gonna wrap this up um, soon. Okay, really quick. Point. Okay, we just uh, one thing with what Dylan Burns earlier. I, I felt like he just kind of left out one specific thing. There was the whole hoax of nuclear winter. I think that had a pretty Im big impact on kind of discouraging people from um, like engaging in like nuclear, um, you know, a nuclear war. And I think that was very, very discouraging. And I think it was a great thing that we created that hoax, hoax specifically with the idea of staving off that kind of a thing. Um, and so I think that had an impact and I just felt like that needed to have been mentioned. And secondly, um, I, I, I agree with Pisco here in the sense that I do like the idea and it's not just 
for only because it's well because I live in the United States that I want America to have nuclear nukes and not everybody else. Um, I think it's because of um, the historic Judeo-Christian values that happen to be embedded into like United States and um, <clears throat> just like our country and our culture. I think those things right there, I think are enough that cause me to recognize that we have less of a likelihood of those nukes being used. Oh my um, God. And so because of that, um, I, I think Go I'm ahead. always going to be um, in, I'm going to be uh, in fa- I'm going to be in favor of United States having nukes and not somewhere. I am so like, smug know, right any, now. I, you know, totally that. Listen, I it's totally funny that you that. should bring that up because I was going to point out and I got to call you both out on this because uh, at the end of the day, I think that this argument um, boils down to an unspoken form of supremacy. The idea that America and maybe Russia, who, you know, they happen to have nukes just by chance, that the people who have nukes are the ones who, the only ones who will be rational with those nukes. In reality, everyone has a rational self-interest to survive. They all do. And realistically, we can conclude, well, most nations would probably come to the same conclusions we are. And the idea that we don't have the risk of fucking up and using a nuke when it's literally almost happened multiple times and we actually did drop a nuke is absurd. We, like, everybody on the planet is humans. And, and, and- Can I stop you real quick at this point? Sure, sure, go ahead, pop in. It's not that I think that there's profound differences in culture. I certainly don't think that Judeo-Christian values are the basis of having some substantive differences between societies. I'm merely saying- What? I think fanatic, oh, you weren't memeing? Fanatic, I was not memeing. I absolutely was not meaning. No, I knew peace. Down. I knew, listen, listen, it's this. I knew Pisco, like Pisco, I agree with Pisco, but for literally totally different reasons. Yeah. I know that Pisco is extremely secular. I was going to interject or inject my idea or this concept that I'm sorry, that's borne out historically that this country has been very much a Christian country, depending on how you want to define that phrase. And so for that reason, I think that's one of the reasons why I think I'm a lot more comfortable with us having nukes than other countries. But with that being said, I knew Pisco would disagree entirely with that reasoning, but Watch we, this. we both agree that we want Watch this. Watch this. Watch <laughs> this. Number one. You dang I, right. Yeah, I mean, I listen, I, I hear Ooh. people make arguments about Bible. The supremacy of Western civilization all the time on this website. And I think it's bullshit when they do it. And I think it's bullshit when y'all are doing it. So in my mind, outside of stepping outside of the America, America first shoes, the Judeo-Christian values best, Western civilization best shoes, stepping out of those shoes, we can realize that any nation, any rational nation, and I assume that other nations are rational because I'm not nationalist or racist, I believe that they would act in their self-interest. And their self-interest says, if we ever want to be free from the shackles of Russia, of China, of America, or of Europe, we have to build our own nukes. Unless we think of a different solution, like maybe a global disarmament plan. Maybe we start to look to work together and say, wow, we're endangering all of us by allowing any of us to control these weapons. Maybe Japan's right. I just think it's, it's not having to do with inherent differences in culture or religion or whatever you i think you can say that you can say that but i I think from the perspective you just don't want more powers having it's a it's a numbers game i don't i don't want there to be a world in which why statistically we're the worst people to have it we shouldn't have it we should take it away from us and give it to somebody else statistically oh man you don't believe we should do that right now right what? I'm so glad I brought. You don't think I should do what right now? That we should de like denuclearize. Oh and, like, no! Wait, of course not. That would be a, that would be ridiculous. The uh, the okay. exact thing that I've set up right now. Like no one country can de denuclearize because then they become the vassal of another nuclear state. It has to be a global. Yeah, it has to be exactly. It has to be a global thing. And until then, wait. we have we still have to deal with this paradigm. We have to deal or paradox. We have to deal with this paradox well, we until we do it. Is status, quo better than, is, is status quo better than... Everyone? Sorry, I'm not a religious supremacist. I will not buy into that or tolerate that. I'm sorry. Look, okay, okay. So this is Demon Mama's argument. It's flimsy. It's mm. frail. It, 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 it will not stand to the test. Damn, okay? it sucks. Your look, arguments must be even worse look, if you can't punch through look, my flimsy yeah, shit. Damn, that's some soft-ass shit. Mama, I haven't even talked... Oh, oh, you mauled it too hard, Dylan. Damn, damn, I am damn, molding. Damn, I am molding because I go, I, I go to university. I work on campaigns. I do all this shit to study for politics. Tip, 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 tip that fedora. Like, tip, tip, tip. And I think, and I think, I thought I talked enough on foreign policy on Twitch for people to learn something. But what I've learned tonight is 
people haven't listened to shit I have said because no one has learned. I went to university, Tip Tip. Leftists okay. don't like learning so, anyway. So, Let's Demon Mama, real. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, bring it out, bring him out. Demon, fuck man, Demon Mama, let me talk, okay? Hey, your buddies are jumping in over you. It's not me. Okay, I'm it was shadows. Dylan, finish it off. Hurry up. No, I don't want to do fuck it. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 do it. Do it. So, so, so the, the end takeaway. It's really no. simple. Well, listen, United States is Western civilization. That's the best. We are tippy, Christian. Tippy, tippy. That's the best. So we're the best people to have the nukes. Is that so? Right. This is the best. Okay, okay. He's, okay. hold on. Me. Hold I'm, on. I want to assume he is, but okay. Um, Wait, can I, I lightly push back on that? Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, I, 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 will, I want to push back on the second one. I don't believe in religious supremacy, but I do think that generally speaking, when it comes to Western countries, and I would like to exclude South Korea and Japan from this for a minute and talk about the US, Canada, and Europe, because the reason why I believe in that, and I don't believe in the idea of cultural relativism, is because I believe that in, when we're talking about the modern day culture, I'll save that this so we can answer that liberal, afterwards. That um, allow for more freedom, and as a society, believe in more freedom, are just superior. They're better. And I would like to specifically point out. By the way, that doesn't mean America is the best because there are other European allies that have reached better parity. I would say when it comes to the issue of gender, sex, top of that list, right there, Norway, then Sweden. And then we probably got like Finland. And then there's probably um, uh, a just handful replace, more of European countries. Just replace the word European with the white. And you're yeah, yeah. White this is this is indistinguishable. No, yeah, I agree with I agree with 100% with mind waves here. This is indistinguishable from Nazi shit. Because here's the thing. How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. In the context of this argument, in the in the context of this argument, is absolutely indistinguishable because you're just assuming that your very biased standards. You live in a liberal nation, but everyone else in the world, when they're looking at the nuclear question. They don't, what the fuck? They're going to think their worldview is the best one. Absolutely. So their Absolutely. rational Absolutely. conclusion, Absolutely. wait, wait, oh no, I know, I know. But wait, their rational conclusion will be to pursue, pursue, pursue nuclear arms. That is the absolute, you can easily do this. Put yourself in the shoes of anyone else if it's possible. I know you might have those American flags wrapped right around your feet, but. It's rational, on, an three, it's rational oh, on an individual level, but it's bad for the world. Well, if obviously, everyone... we, okay. obviously that's okay. the point, but you can't just, but you saying it's bad for the world and then saying, yeah, but, but I, but I just want to live in a place that gets to have the nukes that can't be nuked no, 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 is no, phenomenally no, ridiculous. It's like a ridiculous, it's a laughable no, argument. No, okay. Hold on, I need to make this very clear. I was specifically responding to Fanatic's point on why we are the best and why we should have nukes. And I was adding a little bit of pushback because I do not believe that just because we're Western makes us better. I believe the standard of liberalism okay, and no, egalitarianism was, is a good way to look at cultures. And that is how I would rank cultures. Ones that are more egalitarian for different races and of, genders to, and ethnicities. And, but I, I, I was just I was trying joking. to- Ah, oh, yes, no, and the did, German he, culture. He, 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 the, the, the German was culture was has proven one. itself. Oh, guys, one at a time. <laughs> yeah, I was kidding about the Western thing, Shadows. Like that that was I thought was very obvious. Like I wasn't serious it's just because we're Western that we're better. Like that's I couldn't tell. That's absurd. You, really? I, I couldn't tell either, considering you were just talking about like Judeo Christian right values earlier. Wait, and whatnot. He was muting so. and laughing his ass off to his chat like every come time he said on. that. Come like, on. The Western he, he part, come on. on. Like that's that's a Wait, 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 hold on. But genuine like, question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I I mean that's just one of the topics that we were talking about today. What about the Soviet Union? They had nukes the whole time. They, they, right. were, they, Wait, they weren't they Christian. They right. Right. All right, come on. Um, yeah, but they didn't right. nuke anybody. That's a... All right, holy crap. So, um, all right. Uh, um, all right, I guess we'll move on. Um, but I'll let you all have... I know, I know you, you, want, you want to say more, but we do have other topics. I want to respect other people's time. Um, uh -huh. But wow, I, I let this go on a lot longer than I should have. Uh, we're already way over time for this, way over time. That was fun. Um, but this is that's what I was waiting for, baby. And apparently, that's why you watch me. More to say on this. Ah, oh, gotta. Uh, if I had more time, I would just want to listen to this. It's amazing. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, we'll uh start. Uh, first of all, mind waves, do you want to say anything on this? I know last year's name doesn't want to come. I don't give a fuck about foreign policy. That's Dylan's <laughs> job, all right? I don't. <laughs> I, I leave Dylan up to that, all right? Let's, let's, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, then, uh, uh, Fanatic. What? Wait. Muted. Fanatic? 
Did I mute? Did I, am I good now? Yeah, you're good. There we go. All right, yeah, listen. So we're just going to give our final thoughts. I mean, uh, I almost wish I could go last so no one else could, and it could burn you guys up inside. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I just think, you know, the United States is a great country. We live in a really great country. I think the idea of all these other countries getting nukes is a little bit ridiculous because, as he said, like, you know, then at this point, uh, the conflict can become a lot more alarming. I feel like even though we've obviously had nukes since, like, 1940-something, right? Like, like what, You 40, must not be cucked by the question. What, what was it? Whatever you must transcend it. Was. it. Um, We've had nukes, um, and we've used them that one time, and then very much like everything we've done at this point has been to try to suppress everyone else's. I'm sorry, twice, right? Um, and everything else we've been doing. Yeah, you um, know, we only killed like 300,000 Japanese people, and for, uh, poisoned people them for nukes. generations. I definitely recognize that if we start allowing, and if the more countries have nukes, then yeah, it does become a bit of a problem because yeah, obviously at this point they become certain threats and a lot of our bargaining chips and things like that. Whatever, I get that. Uh, obviously, this is very self-centered and very self-motivated. Um, I do recognize that. A lot of uh, what we do, um, we do provide a lot of aid in other places, in, uh, in other countries, and things like that. Um, and a lot of that time, sometimes that can that I like Pisco. Pisco's fun. And some of these other countries in which we try to police the world, and sometimes it creates crazy deleterious uh, effects, um, like uh, in the Middle East. So, with that being said. Um, Ultimately, yeah, the idea that we should be getting more nukes is just absolutely yeah. This is insane. a fun crew, actually, uh, and I think it would. Just I be like very, my, very I like mind waves too. Nuclear winter isn't real, but the amount of devastation that happens and when we engage in nuclear war is uh, actually hey. ridiculous. And so, for that reason alone, just point blank period, more people having nukes means more threat of nukes happening. Means like we run into a much worse situation. That's the world. That's just my opinion. It's all right. Okay, um, signature. I can totally understand the take on um, just like absolute probability of just like the more of this existing, the higher chance of it going off. I mean, that I really can't argue with necessarily. Um, the, the main problem here is like, you know, who has it and who has the power to utilize it over who doesn't, right? And that's the big issue as to what's going on um, in regards of um, our, our, what I believe like our um, efforts to like suppress who gets nukes and to disarm or like tell people, hey, you can't get this, you can't get that or whatever. Um, I don't know if any government really wants to fire a nuke at another country considering like, you know, it could definitely end in their destruction. Even if that other country didn't have them, they're probably allied with someone that does, right? So I don't know. Feel free to destroy my point. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Pisco. Thank you. Um, on the nuclear proliferation topic, I want to make clear to Demon Mama, my argument isn't one, isn't provincial. It's not from the perspective of someone living in America or someone living in Western society. Uh, it doesn't require, I don't think that you need to make an appeal to the superiority of Western or Judeo-Christian or white values to say that the world is better Maybe. if there are fewer countries with humongous power imbalances with the rest of the countries. I think that the world is safer now with a bipolar world or a unipolar world where there's one hegemon if than you're the with Nepal. countries with relatively balanced amounts of power duking it out over to claim to the whole world. In fact, I think that the world would be safer if there were one government. Um, so to that end, I think that any recommendation to equalize power across the vast majority of nations is inviting more conflict, more war, more death. And it it, it not matter that one country um, in particular have nukes, it matter that one country have nukes. So mm -hmm. I guess I'll, I'll end on that. That's a sort of internationalist politics lens rather than a provincial uh, ethnic or cultural sort of argument for why any particular country need have nuclear weapons. And this is from the perspective, not only of someone living in those countries, but also of countries where they're it dominated is, though. by imperialism. It, it is though. my case. Okay. Uh, Dylan Burns. Okay. So I'm going to put on some music to keep me calm. Okay. Put on Fanatics music. Fanatics so, music is perfect for this. Uh, no, I'm going to listen to uh, Greek uh, Byzantine Orthodox chants. Okay, look. Okay. My statement, never endowed America with some superior knowledge on how to handle nuclear weapons. In fact, I opened it up talking about how America and Russia were really dumbo with nukes. I opened up specifically on how the Russians almost nuked us because their radars malfunctioned and how we I actually didn't get in, get in my point on how we lost a nuke in a literal bush in France. We just dropped one and landed in a bush and it was lost there. We've dropped nukes in the ocean and they're just there sitting in the ocean. We've lost like 28 nukes and we just have no clue where they are, right? So 
my statement was never that America, because America democracy, America manage nukes better, even though I would say that due to the longstanding institutions the state has, the longer they have those institutions, the probably the more structurally sound they are, right? Like the idea, I would say, like a government that has been embroiled in civil war or a government that is based around a single figure would probably be less likely to be stable enough to really hold nuclear weapons long term in that type of stability. Um, I would say a great example would actually be the Soviet Union and the race for nukes after the Soviet Union collapses was actually one of the better examples of that as nuclear weapons were just moving across the Soviet Union after it collapsed. And I think a few actually went missing during that period. Um, yep. So my basis on not wanting other nations to have nukes is based purely off of the fact that it de decreases the risk overall for nuclear incidents to occur between states like Armenia or Azerbaijan or one of the biggest worries throughout the entire international relations community is India and Pakistan and the fact that they're both nuclear powers and they both despise each other and that could lead to a war spiraling out of control and millions dying actually potentially billions dying so it is not now I understand that nations could say well isn't this unfair that is true but it's also much safer than the alternative. It isn't perfect, but I think it's the safest option available until large-scale denuclearization could occur once nation-states have become more integrated with each other through international organizations and the golden uh, arch peace theory of uh, more trade between states. Yep. So until that can happen, less nations with nukes is the safest option, even if it isn't fair. Hmm. Okay, then. All right. Um, I got an next, answer. Uh, Demon Mama. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I think that uh, the sort of logic that, oh, well, we should just allow the Roman Empire to take care of us um, is, is kind of a, a silly approach in my mind. But, but memeing aside, um, I don't think – I think it's rather um, disconnected from reality – to um, ask all other nations essentially to stop pursuing their own self-interest um, until the world can get it together to fix it, but then not hold that standard to yourself. If this is true, and a and as Pisco says, a bipolar or a tripolar world, or even as Dylan says, a no polar world or, or whatever, if we all get rid of nukes eventually, if that's the case, well, then shouldn't we lead by saying, let's get rid of ours and we'll become a part of the British or we'll become a part of France or else we should make them all a part of us. And that's where the problem is, right? Nobody wants to be the one who's a vassal of somebody else because that sucks. Because it sucks to be dominated by another nation that can exploit you and historically has exploited you using the fact that they can hold nukes over your head. So until that moment occurs, every single nation on the planet, because of the mess that we made, because we developed nukes and decided to use them as weapons, um, like until that moment, every nation on earth, it is in their self-interest to pursue nukes. I don't think this is an ideal thing. What I think is that that should, that should clue us all in that the only answer to this problem, the only answer that will ever permanently solve the nuclear problem is for us all to recognize that we are all holding ourselves hostage and that we have bigger things to worry about than who has nuclear power. Um, but until that happens, I can't imagine ever impugning a country for pursuing nuclear power so that they don't have to be the vassal of incredibly cruel imperial powers across this world, which have ruthlessly exploited those which are underneath them and still do to this very day, as we discussed as a major part of this discussion, in fact, with the example being Iran being crushed beneath the fingers of nuclear powers just because we can, just because Donald Trump is in charge. So I think that that um, that a denuclearization approach is the logical conclusion and that anything else is simply pie in the sky, essentially asking for people to willingly lay down and become the, uh, the, the vassal of, of clearly aggressive states. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay. Um, Demon Mama, I think you and I have a lot of things in common. We should talk. Um, shadows. Um, so just two things. One, I would like to make it completely clear that I know I had this lobbed at me. Um, I like to make it completely clear. Thanks, Boycott Israel. That I think so too. I do not give a shit, period, 
about the idea of white nationalism and white supremacism. And like, obviously I'm very against that. I don't believe in Western supremacy or Western chauvinism. I'm not a fucking proud boy. I mean, look at me, I'm some fucking baby ass male bitch. Do I like anything like sushi? Obviously I'm not a proud boy, but that aside, I would just like to make it very, very, <laughs> this guy's facial reactions, uh, priceless. I would like to make it oh, I forgot my very water. clear that I was I was trying to rationalize that belief through the lens of egalitarianism and liberalism because I believe equality is important. There's a reason why I said the U.S. would be pretty far down the list because we have policies in place uh, like the drug war that desperately impact the black community and hurt the black community. And I think we need to seriously address policies within police forces, you know, at local, state, and uh, federal levels that negatively impact the black community and we should work as hard as we can to try and give them a more um, Real a quick just gonna step to the bathroom. I will be right back. Um, but that aside um, I would say I actually like the direction this conversation flowed I know we started with my stance on Iran and went all the way to uh, nuclear proliferation and I just like the flow of conversation I um, mean, I would say, you know, my statement on deeper proliferation is that I have nothing to say because Dylan said it way better than I ever could have said. So just, I'd like to say that I, I his closing statement on that was very based. Um, and also I have to go to the bathroom, so I'll be back. Gotcha. Um, okay. So uh, I wanted to first uh, let uh, introduce our uh, two others uh, who uh, join us a little later. Um, so I want to uh, introduce uh, Mindways. Mindways, thank you for being here, uh, buddy. Really appreciate you coming Yo. through. What's up? Hey. hey um looking sharp um you're a snazzy dresser unlike uh uh dylan maybe you could help him out dm him um let him know <laughs> that shirt uh, is a little bit gaudy i'm not gonna lie dylan look look what is look, that? look i this is from tyson fury's new clothing line it's the wbc champion belt because i am the champ okay and you know what i'm always more fashionable than you because you just don't show up on most shows when you schedule to come on yeah, oh, I look. I I would feel bad to blow your fashion out of the water every time I show up. So you know, I've been taking well, a break. I mean, I I understand you're trying. You know, you're trying to make up for it with you. I know you you can only wear a beanie in so many different ways. I got it. <laughs> That's why you're not showing up anymore because you can only wear it. So look, many ways. dude. Look, I get it. You got the hair. All right, I'll give you that. But your clothes yeah. need some work. All right, just. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Okay, I got it. You just you just don't have a champion's mentality, so you just can't notice game. <laughs> no, but uh, Prime, thanks you for having me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good to be here. I'm, I'm having fun. So, yeah. All right, awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> next, of course, is uh, my man. Last username. I'm most happy to have here. Last username. Um, thank you for uh, showing up. Um, once again, uh, you've helped help out the show. Um, helping out this community. Um, have a good conversation coming in. Um, um when um, uh. Like we really needed you, but uh, you came through. So thanks so much, uh, Elio. Yeah. Uh, hey, buddy, how you doing? Good to be here. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, and uh, while we're waiting for them to come back, uh, I will say, uh, hey, everyone. Um, follow me if you haven't followed me uh, before. Uh, we have conversations like this all the time. This was a really fire conversation. <laughs> I really liked it a lot. Um, if you want more of this, uh, yes, please give me a follow. But also, you need to, I need you to uh, help me uh, support this channel. So um, if you can um, sub I've to returned. Me, um, welcome back. Or welcome country, back to so me. Please, and uh, hello do, again to you. Uh, sub, if you can give subs, uh, that would be also be useful. But also, we have a donation button uh, down below the stream. Same for me. You can donate and much more of your money gets to uh, to this channel uh, so that uh, I can keep this com uh, um uh this the uh, all this Did I miss anything uh, good? towards you so um if you can help us out um if, uh then we can make this content uh uh into the future but right now um we're not uh getting that kind of support so if you can help us out that'd be really useful thank you um and i oh, thank you for the follow all right so uh we'll move on to our second topic i guess and uh we'll catch up um okay. next topic Aww, is kitty. As soon as I can find it. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go. I hope you're enjoying Pathologic too. I love that game. I guess those are top five. Genuinely oh, nice. wonderful game. All right. Topic two. Is it fair to question Supreme Court justice nominees religion as it relates to their future role? What about any other political uh, leader such as the president? 
Do you think Amy Coney Barrett's extremely conservative religious affiliation would unfairly influence any of her rulings? All right. I did this Episcopal in mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Shadows, we, uh, we just introduced topic two. Um, I, I, I literally just read it. So um, it, it's pinned in the tab, uh, pinned in the group DM. So uh, uh, yeah. Is it topic one? No, topic two. Um, the one about the- Oh, are we going in reverse court. order? Yeah, yeah now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do that. Uh, we'll start with uh, Demon Mama. Um, yeah, I think it's perfectly fair to question a Supreme Court justice about their um, religious interests, um, s you know, so long as how it pertains to the court. Um, I don't think that we should um, necessarily discriminate based on that, but I think it's important, especially if there are um, things like um, like oaths that have been sworn to a religious cause that could stand in the way, that could, you know, very, very reasonably stand in the way of their ability to give a fair judgment to perhaps someone of another religion. Now, um, I think that this is really important for the Supreme Court, especially because we need to be sure that the people we're putting on the Supreme Court are as unbiased as possible and as we know that's basically a thing of the past at this point but nonetheless we're talking about whether it should or shouldn't be not what is so um in an ideal world yes we should be able to question them about that we should be able to say hey um did you sign a pact that said that you would put your religion before anything else and if so does that really make you worthy or does that allow you to um be in a position of 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 legal supremacy, the Supreme Court, the highest court in the country. Um, I think that's a perfectly reasonable discussion to have. Um, I do think we need to be careful so that we don't like, like just bar people off of the Supreme Court for some religious belief. However, I do think that there are certain things, certain um, belief systems. Surely we can acknowledge that this is the case with, polit with political systems. If a if a, a justice was being nominated for the Supreme Court and they'd sworn fealty to another nation, we might be concerned about that. Um, so given what we are working with now, what we should do, of course we should take into consideration in my mind, um, religious beliefs, especially ones that involve like strong pledges or anything like that and how they might impact their ability to um, work on the court. But yeah, that's my position on it. Okay, signatural. Yeah, we talked about other beliefs. I had to read this. I had to reread this topic a few times. Is it fair to question a Supreme Court justice nominee's religion as it relates to a future goal? I mean, like to question her, like about her religion, to literally ask, just ask questions about it. I don't think that's necessarily unfair or Welcome anything. Back, Happy to have that. You. But um, my knee-jerk reaction in regards to like should this be a consideration, like a serious consideration as to whether or not they should get the seat or not get the seat. Or whether or not, of like as as per like their nomination, and everything. I don't think it should even be like, in on on the table in regards to that, right? Like um, to try to even like to talk about like, oh well, you know, you're part of this religious affiliation, hmm. so I don't know Coffee if you could talk? really be on okay. the seat or be on the court because of your affiliation with this. I don't really think that's fair. I'll save this for after Rex. Um, the way the uh, constitution is interpreted, I'm pretty sure almost everybody on like like in there in that um place has um has like implicit like biases and ways that they grew up and ways that they do this that caused them to like inform how they interpret the constitution how they choose to um, do it i don't the, agree with that's that that's ultimately God. their job right is to I think interpret that goes it a certain far. way and come to a consensus based off of like you know the fuzzy thing that we call morality you know and how we handle it in this country through law <laughs> um so um like i guess i it have to be like a like a soft no when it comes to like relates to the, when it comes to that but like it's a yes and relates to the future role maybe yes i don't know <laughs> i think we're going to have an interesting discussion about this uh, i like the the lines aren't uh, cleanly drawn here all right uh dylan well maybe oh great apostle of ireland glorious saint patrick to whom under god so many are indebted for the most precious of all treasures the great gift of faith received our fervent thanks for the zeal and charity which have been to thousands a source of blessings so invaluable Ask for all who dwell in this land, in the land of thy laborers, the precious light of faith, and beg for us on whom glorious rays have long since beamed the grace to regulate our lives by its sacred maxims. Gang, gang. Okay? That's my opening statement. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Um... <laughs> the random gang, gang at the end is just fucking priceless. Shadows. Uh... Dylan, uh, first of all, I just want to say, Dylan, I love you. You fucking hilarious, my dude. You are just on it tonight. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, to uh, 
to go to the um topic um i would say that you know true when it comes that's okay to though questioning someone's religion um i would say for the most part i disagree with that um you there know, is like, yeah i i think we should not like try and bring someone's religion to the conversation um you know this idea of like swearing to a pact where you put religion before everything else or you swear or you us uh, um swear loyalty to a foreign nation is just so unlikely from any type of judge at the federal level like i remember i can vividly remember my dad swearing in and the shit he had to say like my dad is a judge so i know the shit judges have to say you know when they become a judge and you know they have to you know follow the law they're not allowed like my, like my dad would have been barred from this if he was part of an anti-government group any time in his life because that bars you from becoming the type of judge he is like the, like there's rules and how this works and i will say specifically just to be lenient towards the people who think this is okay i would say just to be lenient it is fair to question whether or not her uh deep religiosity heavily influences how she would rule on different stuff because she has only been on the bench for so long. And I think, you know, nominating someone who has literally only been a judge for what, like two or three years and was like, you know, literally a law professor. Sure, she is um, specialized in constitutional law and she was, you know, well liked among even, you know, her liberal professor colleagues. And sure, there's some credentials to that. But the fact that she was a law professor for nearly two decades and has only been on a bench for two or three years should just be proof that, like, she's unqualified. Like, you need to find, if you want to appoint an originalist, which he wants to do, and I hate that and whatnot, I think we need to have more textualists, obviously. So I'm in favor of having, you know, Bine, uh, the Bine appointee um, be <laughs> next. Um uh, I, I think that's fair, but it needs to be someone who is, um, you know, more experienced, has Sorry, a longer we're tenure. We're kind of on ACB, Sorry. but like, yeah. Um, has a longer tenure on a bench, and we can say with some level of confidence, you know, that their deep religiosity does not have a major effect on how they rule. Okay. Uh, Amy, and Amy, Amy Coney Barrett is the she uh, and the her um, that uh, Shiles is referring to uh, our Supreme Court uh, nominee currently. Um, but okay. Um, so uh, last year's name? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, in a secular society, the general sort of social norm is that when someone says, well, I have these religious beliefs, but I can keep them I can perform my, my job without letting them influence my, my decisions if they're not supposed to. Then we generally, you know, take, we give them the benefit of the doubt unless we have some particular reason to think that they're violating their principle. And we do that because a lot of people have religious beliefs. I mean, I don't have uh, religious beliefs. Sorry, myself, I was just reading so something there. Sorry about that. I, I guess there's some, in some I don't philosophical sense that that's sort of weird and irrational, but that's how society works. And it kind of has to work that way. Otherwise, we would have to be, you know, we couldn't really trust anybody. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think there's any particular reason to just because uh, a justice claims to be religious um, to say, well, you're religious, so I don't trust you to do this. I mean, in, in some sense, it, you can be as, as, as uh, you know, you, you should be highly critical of someone who you're giving uh, such a powerful position. But ultimately, if they say like, well, I'm, I'm not biased by my religion, and I've given, you know, all the, all, all the, I have lots of reasoning that I've written for the class decisions I've made and expressed my views clearly on these things. And if, uh, and if there's no particular reason to, to suspect bias or to, to claim that they're biased, then you kind of have to take the word for it. Yeah. So I guess it, it is ultimately unfair. You can say, are you going to be biased by your religion? If they say eh, no, not really. you got to take the word. Although one time, apparently he did go on about uh, lowering the age of oh, consent man. or something. I really want to get into this topic. Mind waves. Um, I, I, I think this question is a little bit silly, to be honest. Um, we already do, um, like, like, uh, have, th there's a process to where they, they check for any sort of biases. They, they have to vet these judges. I do agree actually with shadows, um, that it's very sus to like even nominate a, a judge that doesn't have a very long tenure. Uh, cause then what, what are you going to really judge that off of? Um, as far as like what we should 
take into account when it comes to when it comes to a nominee for religion. Username? I don't really give a fuck what religion they ascribe to. Um, but he's an what AMCAP, I'm more so interested that makes in sense. is looking at how they've ruled in the past as a judge and seeing if their religion played any role in their decision making in that. I don't um, know. And if that is the case, obviously I wouldn't want that to to affect their decision. And obviously I, I would say that that disqualifies them. Uh, that's as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Okay, fanatic. Can I go left? I uh, want Pisco to go no, last. No, 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 no. You're, right, you're right. You're right. Pisco should go last. I, I, I'm actually really like interested to hear his thoughts. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, that I'm was taking down notes. Um, so let me just go through these really quickly. Uh, well, first I'll just go ahead and and and, and say my thing is I 100% agree overall that yeah we should absolutely question a person to figure out like if they can. I'm making a weird champ how, at you right like, now, Ace Man. Agree that religion influences their position on the bench and the decisions that they'll be making. Um, but this idea that we're going to some kind of way specifically compartmentalize a person's rulings 100% from their religion is just unfounded, unrealistic, illogical. That's just not, that's not real life. It's not practical. It's not pragmatic. I don't know how many more words to say. It's just absolutely insane. And anyone advocating for that. Oh, I saw that one, really Rakasan. Um, uh, so Demon Lama specifically said, um, signing a pact that you would put like like the, the idea was about like this is just the like, opening statement though remember so like okay i got yeah. you so yeah so ultimately so yeah do we have the right to question to try to ascertain whether like how influenced a person is by their religion yeah I sure do. that's her perfectly reasonable but i think what we have witnessed is very often that there is this very much um there is an intolerance of religion amongst liberals and because of that it causes them to be completely unbiased i mean completely be completely biased against a person with strong religion values when it comes to their appointment and i think that right there is something that the reason why we're even having this conversation um but yeah so that's i guess though that's my my point in a nutshell and then i sure to okay stupid. oh boy i want to fight hey. uh i'm ready to fight uh pisco please okay i'll give everyone what they want first there should of course be no explicit religious test to hold any office in the united states including the supreme court of that course, is obvious. obviously. However, tell me if this is too loud. Of course, it makes sense to question any nominee's personal religious beliefs. I'm a little chilly. First, think of it sort of to the abstract to the extreme. Is that too Imagine loud? Can you hear that? Imagine that a nominee that? was a member of a religious organization, uh, Scientology. Is my fan too loud? Or imagine a religion that was okay, centered good. around anti-Semitism. Because I'm cold and I want to turn on my little heater. Racism. These are supposed hypothetical religions. I don't know if they. I'm not trying to ascribe Thank any. Thank you. That makes me now. happy. I'm not me. My mic is great. That has these as sort of core tenets. But imagine if that was <laughs> of course it would make sense to, Fair enough, to question those beliefs Fair enough. deeply held. I think that religion in our society has this um people treat it with profound piety and hands off. And they shouldn't. Religion should be like politics or anything else. It should be something that should be questioned, should be talked about. Um and in some sense, when you're uh, sort of assessing the qualities of a soon to be judge, it makes sense to question their religious beliefs. Why? How can you separate a devout Christian faith from deciding sort of the establishment clause implications or free exercise clause implications of the ministerial hey, if the argument isn't working out, it's always okay to take a break. of certain anti-discrimination frameworks to churches, among other things. Ooh, it Ben Burgess, rare, that would be fun. I think, person to be able to completely, I hope I can get on that as one. Fanatic said, compartmentalize uh, one set of beliefs from another. People will find ways to, they'll never write explicitly, this I'm signing because I'm religious, right? But there are other ways where you can imagine these kind of beliefs will embed themselves. And it's important for us as responsible members of society to interrogate that and to see if that is in fact true about our political leaders just as much as our judicial nominees. So I would extend it as the question asked to presidents. I would extend it to any political leader. And for peace craft in the chat, I would, of course, oh, peacecraft. extend it to all religions. Of course, not Christianity. I would extend it to Islam and Judaism. Of course, I'm not a uh, partisan hack or a religious hack in that sense. Um, and why do I think there's a big concern? I think it's a big concern. I think so, religion, maybe. Religion, in my mind, is a force for... Peacecraft getting called um, out in somebody else's chat this time. ...in this country, a force for entrenchment of horrible views in this country. Um, it, it fosters an attitude of credulity and has no place in our law or in civilized society. Um, and we should fight it where we can, especially in the heart of our federal judiciary. Um, what saltification? Could you define that for me? I have never heard of this. 
stultification i believe Stult. it means like the weakening or the making um regressing or i'll, I'll look up the actual definition right now maybe i got it wrong ten dollar okay. word right there yeah right okay um i was cause looking, to lose looking, enthusiasm yeah. uh, especially as was, right so so cause to lose enthusiasm and initiative especially as a result of tedious or, re or restrictive okay. routine okay fair yep. enough all right so uh open to the floor um oh god i really want to fight uh but anyone can go uh i would like to um uh mention two things pisco said uh, i think it's important that you know that that would do question all religions and i think you know it'd be it, that's an interesting topic to discuss um like how if different religions um you know would affect different questions from certain people like uh you know obviously with the devout catholic pretty much all the questions are coming from a democrat but if there was a devout muslim from you know i don't know maybe a circuit court in minnesota or michigan you know you might get a lot of questions from right wingers it might be a very partisan thing and then you know if you get a orthodox jew from a circuit court you know both sides but more so on the right would be very much walking on eggshells if they ask questions about that um so i think it's really interesting about it i do think there's a component though of the fact that you know that christian is you know christianity is a dominant religion of america it's over 70 percent of the country that causes people to be more willing to ask questions about it um like i said i do think right ringers would but i think there would also be a lot that would realize that like hey this is only like two percent of the country and would you know be smart enough and have the emotional awareness to walk on eggshells in that case but um you also brought up something about ministerial ex um exceptions and that reminded me because there was this Supreme Court case on material uh, exceptions earlier There's this several. year. Several, yeah. It's, yeah, it, it was the one about um, like a religious school. Yeah. And it had to do with like the firing of that. Was there a ruling on that? Sorry, just there finding was. information so, on this. Yeah, what ruling was, ruling was the ministerial exception was extended to these these teachers who essentially imagine this. I'll, I'll, I'll let the panel decide what they think of this. The church is able to say, as part of our free exercise clause, it's important to us to have to be able to pick our ministers. And we should be able to pick those ministers without input from the government. And that means, as a right, we should be able to say in contravenance and in conflict with federal employment law, our ex-minister can be white and we can say explicitly he has to be white. Or our minister has to be a male. You can imagine that in the Catholic context. No. And they were applying that sort of high level ministerial, maybe there's some merit to that, to like janitors and to like teachers who are instructed with the faith. And they wanted immunity from having that be reviewable. That's an incredible amount of power to give to churches, to be free from federal law, from neutrally, facially neutral laws about racial discrimination, among other things. And I think it, it wasn't matters. Racial. No, that's, yes, that's, it, I think that, that's a mischaracterization. It, it, it wasn't, applied. No, it wasn't, it, hold on. That's a mischaracterization of what the, what the case was about and what the reasoning for the case was. Specifically, the, ca the, specifically the case had to do with specifically uh, specific uh, religious-based schools wanting to ensure that the teachers and um, the people who would be teaching their students would also be of the same religion. As, you, as I'm sure you no, can imagine. No, you're wrong. The, the, that, the, the, that, that had a lot to do with what the case what was. was one of the, what was this called? What was this called? Just tell it's me what called, it was called. Uh, um, St. Agnes versus, just read up ministerial exception, latest case. I forget it. I think it's St. Agnes something. But you're wrong. Yeah. One of the litigants was a different religion than the the religion that he was, that she was involved in. So she was like either, a, she wasn't a Catholic, she was a Protestant, and she was teaching at school. So it's not about the litigants' religion. It's about the right to be able to pick their quote unquote ministers and to be free from like anti- right, I'm going to address something else here can, soon. Can you give, is there an example where they were yeah. talking about specifically about the race of an individual or about the well, sex no, of an individual? Well, no, but the reasoning, okay, so no, the reasoning is more wider than that, faith. right? That was my so, point. Historically, that's what happened. What, no, no, but I get, but no, 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 no. You want to extract it. I get it. No, no, no. You want, it's, extract it's, it. you want to extract it to be like, well, look, we can interpret this to mean something broader. But the okay, case so as it happened, you're saying it's better to discriminate about that. It's better to discriminate based on age and based on the fact that the litigant had cancer than it is discriminated on race. Is that what you're telling me? No, the, I, the reasoning no, applies. The okay, so they were discriminated because one had cancer. Yeah, there was. And they were discriminated because one was old. That one of the litigants who had cancer died, and she was claiming that they were firing her because she had cancer. She had good claims for that too. The other one was saying that because she was old, and so the reasoning applies, and everyone now acknowledges it's going to apply to race, just as it did for the ADA and ADA. So, yeah. it, do you want to give the churches this power to be free from all federal neutrally valid facial laws? 
then I think that's an incredible power to give to churches. You're going to see a lot of self-dealing. And if we have Christian, devout Christians in the court, that could expand that exception even further. Um, yeah. I would actually say um, in response to that, like at that point, if you're going to give a ministerial exception to um, any religious institution, whether it be school or place of worship, at that point, like, like what the fuck? Like, why do you even have like protected classes enshrined in federal law at that point? Like, honestly. Well, because it gets, then, it, then it becomes a, a, a question about the attack on freedom of religion, right? Like <laughs> on, on the First Amendment, right? So as a church, if you decide, like, I mean, li literally, that's partially what f founded this country in the first place. It was like a lot, a group of a group, groups of pilgrims who wanted Here's to have the freedom. All right, hold on. We'll groups of, groups yes, of pilgrims. Guadalupe. Yeah. Group, okay, groups of pilgrims who wanted the freedom to be able to re, uh, mm -hmm. worship together, and that was largely what was first coming to this country before we were, we were even established as a country. It was free. It was it was trying to seek freedom from religious <laughs> persecution. So this idea that people want to be able to establish like their communities and be able to function as a as you're a, wrong. As, they were whatever. okay. They wanted to establish their own religious persecution, uh, based and on that happened own... in many places. It, that no, happened no, in many no, places. I'm sorry. But this like, is not an opinion. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. Historically, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, 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 that's a mythologizing of the facts. A lot, a lot of the pilgrims who came over happened to have been communities that wanted to be able to practice and serve together. And that's what they literally did. And prosecute their own oppression just... on their own terms and away from the power and oppression of the Anglican Church. They wanted complete I, I, control and that's... their own religious dogma. And they, they got did, that. but even, yeah, that's even, what I'm saying for sure. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I feel like you didn't really create a distinction there. Um, okay. So, with that being said, it's reasonable oh for people within churches to be wanting to create within their own communities and not within against their own within their own. Okay, schools, so then, then the apply it to his logical, that. apply it to his logical conclusion. I pass. Hey, thanks a for the follow, Bagel. Facially neutral, happy to law, have you. Generally applicable that says people shall not kill other people, and you say, well, no. You see here, you see here, Pisco. This law contravenes my religion the free exercise no. of my religion requires me to sacrifice one of members of my of our church every 10 months and that yeah. you can't apply your law your neutrally your facially some neutral of them did me it violates my freedom of religion so defend no, that. So, no, no 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 i will i won't listen i won't defend i will not defend the, is unconstitional i will not defend i will well, not I will not defend the straw man that you're establishing it's here. Not a straw literally man. no person is it is absolutely a straw man because so I'm not arguing free? that. Hold on, I'm not no one is arguing that. So I'm not going to defend that straw man. But what I will say is that uh, we do recognize, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of poll, polls, uh, pew polls that talk about this, that the only time when there is a belief, when there is a religious belief and a constitutional belief and the two are at ends, then the constitutional belief will always be um, the one that's upheld. Yeah, you're citing um, the constitutional belief, right? So the, the state law is you shall not kill, and the constitution is the free exercise clause. You think the free exercise clause includes things like, uh, I should be able to fire people because they're black, or you didn't say black, fire no. people because they have cancer. No. And I, no, I, just I, religion. I said, okay, just so religion. do I, I have any baby rats? I don't have any baby rats. Of children. All of my rats Tell are very why old, why and they're the not doing so well because they're right. real old. They're like three um, years old. Because then it would be a complete. They're getting the a little also sick. The, the children, like it makes. I'm, they're just very yeah, fragile. It would be a violation of the constitution, like as far as like so, uh, everyone's life. But they've lived a good life. But he doesn't say that. Really? Hold on. Okay, no, there's, I'm, there's. Are just, you asking me if the killing of people is not a, not a, a constitution? What, okay, so what, 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 why do you even ask that question? No, what I'm saying is, violation. what you are saying that you're, the free exercise clause gives you protection from. They're just old, these facially neutral rats, laws. The thing is with rats, namely is, um, the Title VII. They of are very Act prone to tumors when they get old. ADA so once they get the past ADA like two and a half years, they almost always get a tumor. It's okay. They're contacts. getting all the love. I mean, yeah. Free exercise clause protects you against. Uh, yeah. Religions against it's a little that, sad, but, it's but okay. somehow murder is different. Yeah, it just happens. No, it's just no, how no, they again, are. It's just I, part of their I, genetics, again, unfortunately. I've, I've only been Rats are here for a good as, time, as not as for a long time. Where, um, people want to we love them. Sure that, uh, that, that, that the people that are practicing with them have the same religious beliefs, and that's um, that's something that's been literally fought against uh, pretty regularly. It happened recently in Virginia um, under their uh, Democrat legislature. Oh, what about wow. Texas? All right, there's a um, lot. Of, so a religion that says I, I, part of being a religious minister in our organization means you cannot pay taxes to the federal government, which, which funds X thing that we don't like. Therefore, we claim a religious exemption from taxation. So, so that's actually as a, consti something, as no, a constitutional that's matter. Passed, that's as a constitutional matter. I, I got you. So that's something that also just recently got ruled on by the Supreme Court when a 5-4 ruling in which they determined, yeah, a, they, they, they do no. have the... 
They did. They just that just passed. So, so they listen. Determined, hold on. Listen, 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 listen. It's You're wrong. This, okay, I got you. Let me be wrong and let me finish my sentence though. So this can only be a conversation if that happens. So anyway, so what what they did determine was that they recognized Aww. that um yeah yeah I don't think I could do a snake again for that reason. To Makes me too sad. Force them to uh, provide health care that violates their um their religious religious beliefs, and that's something that was just recently. But I did have two I, snakes. That's not what I said. To. Did you hear what I said? So no, I that's said, what I said. Okay, so so what I was so you I'm addressing a, a claim of religious exemption to income taxation. That was ruled explicitly. You can't have a religious oh, exemption. That's too for bad. That. You sure, can't have a religious just, exemption for the draft, among other things. Sure, got, that. guys, sure. wrap this up. Wrap this argument up because okay. we are move away from the actual topic. Yeah, yeah. Let's. I, yeah, um, okay. Let, uh, what? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's. Let's. Yeah, we can get back to it. Well, okay. Ahead. So wait a minute. Uh, like on this topic, the. I mean, as yeah, I understand it, this issue is that the ministerial exception is based on is constitutionally based, right? On yes, on the a free and law. the thing that it's an exception to is not constitutionally protected, and that's the that's why Correct. they're giving. It. So, so I mean, your analogies to like you know, could a religion, uh, you know, could you claim that a religion lets you commit murder or whatever is is not a good analogy because why? the constitution does. Well, doesn't the Constitution say that you can't kill people? No. 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 Yeah. Yes, it does. It's when it's, no. it's talking about. It says the government can't take away your life without due process of law. It doesn't say people can't take other people's. Yeah. Uh, Mine was a good skater, so I understand it. So well, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's especially says, working in such a small space. Talks about life and liberty. And uh, still uh, having it. That's the Declaration of Independence. That. Yeah, that is I, the Declaration of Independence. Let me find it. You're, not I think a legal document. Right. Okay. Well, no, okay. Very important. It, look, it's not a legal document. It's essentially like a prelude to the Constitution, which is an actual legal document. But the Rats Declaration of Independence itself is not a legal document, which is which is why the worst point. Ever, it's a wild argument I mean, so far, most lady. Point, most pro-life, been wild. Points, in my opinion, are pretty bad. But the worst ever pro-life position will always be we're in the Declaration of Independence. It says life, liberty, and pursue happiness. It's like the Declaration of is not in. Is not a fucking going legal back, hey, a fucking Chad, moron. going going back to the to the just the, the thing about like the religious person or anything like that. I'm just saying that like like wouldn't this be solved by yeah just totally saying, like you know you can't use religious. I have no idea like, what he was doing uh, there. Clauses. At I think all he was trying to be to funny. But... against protected classes. Well, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. That I thought it was a neutral law. You know, Title Seven says you you can't discriminate people based on race. And I thought well, that or, 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 even, or even just age, right? Age discrimination, or age, or, right, just, or all those wonderful just like statutes, these sorts of things. Yeah, those it's wonderful like, statutes think, that protect us. I guess they don't protect people who are employed by churches. And seems I, pretty clear. Seems pretty clear. Also, doesn't that say, this is also include religion? By the way, I believe when we were talking about our uh, protected classes, right? You can't discriminate against someone based off of those things. Uh, in it terms depends of depends on the it depends, depends on the statute. statute. Yeah. Depends on the statute. Okay, then. But yeah, like they're they're also some some religious groups also fall under that sort of thing as well. But I don't know. It seems uh, okay. Seems a little clear cut to me. Yeah. So this isn't the conversation I'm going to have. Like not at yeah. all. <laughs> this isn't it. Yeah, this, this is, is it, guys. Yeah, I, I was just using that as a lot of time. I was just using that, just using that example of more time talking about it. I I don't want to talk about it anymore too. But I was just using mm-hmm. as an example of where religious devout religious belief could come into place of someone who wants to extend these protections further than they should be under the uh the first amendment clauses religion clauses Um, okay yeah to build a bridge back to the sort of primary issue here uh, there was some um sort of mythologizing that was going on in this conversation that I, 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 out of curiosity, I looked up the uh, recent, you know, recent Pew stats on like religiosity in America um, by a, a solid margin. Every single political party in the United States is dominated by um, largely Christian folks, but people who believe in God nonetheless. There are a lot like 70 percent, uh, over 70 percent of the Democratic Party, the liberals. Um, are also religious themselves. So the idea that like liberals don't like religion or whatever is just a myth. That's just a, 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 in the minds of people who are wishing to sell that. Um, I think there, you know, I think it's really important for us in a country that isn't just all Christians and shouldn't just be all Christians for the record, for anybody out there who's thinking that it should be, um, that we are able to separate the, the sort of predominant religious bias um, from the court system. And um, I have, you know, I have some issues with the way that we run our court system here, but that's neither here nor there. But the fact of the matter is that religious beliefs are still beliefs and religious beliefs can very much become political beliefs. We would all be lying to our audiences if we were to say that like Amy Coney Barrett, Coney Barrett's views on abortion weren't 
influenced by her religion and that influenced why she was chosen by the Republican Party, a party that is dominated by evangelical Christians. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't reflect badly on I, that doesn't views on a, like you're talking about legal views or personal views, right? Well, I mean, does it is that personal is it, both. Yeah. Well, that's why it's person. That's why it's important to question this. That's why it's important to question that if you have religious views that could be that religious personal views that are impacting your ability to perform on the court, it's a perfectly fair thing. But how to do you decide question if that. it's impacting their ability? Oh, I mean, that's very difficult, right? That's a hard question. The answer here oh, is no, whether I mean, we should or shouldn't question it. And the way that you do that is by questioning asking. them thoroughly, asking, questioning them, grilling them, um, putting them through a rigorous process that we should do for any anyone we're going to give that much power to absolutely sure, but ultimately you can do that and you can basically like you probably come to the point and realize okay there's no particular reason to to think that this person has this person's personal views has affected their decisions they've made you know they've written just legal justifications for their past decisions they seem it probably won't intense. help Lassie. okay you're right it probably won't well, help. wait but you could say that you could like, say that about yeah. anything though yeah, you, you could say that about any list. belief because yeah. all belief at some point we all recognize there's like an islot gap like you all beliefs that you have are going to come to that point where eventually you're going to be making it like a, a rational jump somewhere um, but what we're trying to do here is to determine whether within a reasonable level, which ultimately is the determination of our representatives to make that call, um, but the only way they're ever going to be able to make that call is if they're willing to question, if they're willing to dig into that and say, hold on a second, we need to ask about this. And it's especially important when the predominant religion in the country is also the one of the person who's going to be going to the court, because that could very, very well, very likely be a bias. Um, I mean, imagine if you had somebody who was a member of, uh, I mean, this is something that happens. There are many, well, not this the standard, right? Well, you well, give people the benefit of the doubt. What do you if mean? There's no particular evidence that they were biased. Wait, what do you okay. mean? There's like a lot of ways you could do this. Like, for example, if I was to ask you like, um, God, there's all kinds of ways. If I wanted to grill the hell out of you, I could probably find a whole lot of potential biases. Uh, if I wanted to grill the hell out of shadows, oh. for example, wait, it's really, oh. really easy. Like, okay, let me, let's, let's do this. Uh, here's something. Um, I mean, like an example I could do right now is we can, we could pretty much say that shadows probably has a bias towards like Israel. He's got an Israeli flag. No, He's no, admitted that, right? We're talking about. It. If you're talking What's about that? capacity to do a particular job, um, how do you determine that his... Uh, oh, here's uh, one. You know, here's an easy example. Let's say you have a doctor, right? ...his capacity to do that job. Yeah, let's say, you have a, um, let's say you have a doctor, right? And you ask that doctor and you say, hey, um, do you believe that all people um, should, you know, have uh, equal medical treatment? You know, we're trying to put somebody in the position of a doctor that's going to be overlooking many people. Um, and then they go, well, yeah, except these people. And then you go, well, wait a second. Why is that? Why do you believe that these people don't deserve that? And then they go, well, I mean, they're worse than me. Then you might go, okay, you have a bias against those types of people. And they might say they're less than me because of my religion, or they might say they're less than me because of well, okay, but whatever. I mean, so that's, these are perfect. Like, like, do you will not believe that like bias that, is I possible? Do my job properly. Wait, then, well, then, wait, then what are you, what are you, wait, 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 last year's name, what the fuck are you arguing against? Are you arguing against the concept of a bias? No, 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 he's well, arguing, asking, no, 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 asking no, no, how... no, I'm sorry, let me, let me, if we can just make sure that this is really crystal clear here, he's not saying that there's no such thing as bias, he's saying that how, he's, he's, he's questioning how you ascertain the information of whether or not a person is biased. Sure. And that's what yeah, he's like, saying. Yeah, yeah there's a whole lot of ways, there's like, there's like tons and tons of ways to do that. Admits that they're biased. There's like tons of ways to do that. There's tons of ways to do that. Amy Coney Barrett has written papers before on her stances on issues. On yeah. rel Imagine that she had a paper that said, a life begins at conception. That belief alone informs the legal analysis because you, there's a balancing of interest well, weighed hold on. for she abortion. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, 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 what would be the bias there? Wait, what no, wait, here's there? what you do. You go, why do you believe that life begins at conception? And then they go, whatever their reasoning is. And then you say, okay, is that a religiously motivated reasoning? Do you believe that because God said so? Well, yeah, okay, that might be that might be a problem. Sure, exactly. If, that, if that's the case, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, because again, you but what if they also say, wait, but wait, that, wait, I'm not going to let wait, that wait, affect wait, wait, my. Let me, let me, no, 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 wait, 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 me. Come on, I'm it talking. Would. It, it would necessarily. No, 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 no. I, you've been talking. I wanted to respond really quickly. So th this is, again, this is doing this really, like, ridiculous thing again, where it's almost like a, a really simple straw man, right? Because the idea doesn't immediately become that just what? because 
oh, okay, so you've traced the argument to its origin and then already precluded that the basis of these origin had to have been religious based. There are plenty no. of people who can easily separate, separate and compartmentalize their religious belief that's from whatever what their other said. belief is. And, well, no, 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 no. And if that's the case, and it's very possible to believe that life begins at conception and it not be based on religion. So you can't assume those two. Demon so, Mama is like, saying yeah. we should inquire about it. And if it, and if, what if, what if Amy Coney Barrett said, yeah, it's religiously motivated? Are you saying that has that shouldn't factor into our question no, of whether that, we should? No, of course. Well, actually, that, that, this is so ridiculous. We've all been saying if then, right? We, 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 no, no one's no one's denying the ability. That, to yeah, but you're not making an argument. You're just saying this what if thing that's already contained in the example. We have to question these things because it's relevant. No one's and, disagreeing that. Yeah, but no yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. You literally are. Who, that means, who disagrees? That means, when did I disagree? Connect, connect, connect. If that's the case, then does that mean that um, uh, if we can question it, should it be a serious consideration? Thank you, Shadow Fox, for the 200 bits. Um, should it be a serious con consideration then? So they've admitted it. So as Pisco said, um, the, the question about like uh, your stance on abortion or whatever it is, right? And, and they say, yes, this is religiously motivated uh, because I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, uh, I believe abortion should not be legal. Well, well take so, one step, yeah. well, one step behind that. So life begins at conception. That would, that belief is on its face. Like, how does that really factor into legal analysis? But it does, because part of the test of abortion and whether a law is okay is balancing interests, right? And if you can balance right, a life no versus another life, no, but 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 it no, informs. No, we're questioning whether or not it's religiously informed. That's not the problem. We're not talking about just where does it base. Are you saying it's impossible? Are you saying it's impossible? No, 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 so yes, um, the, the idea is I 100%. I don't think Dylan idea. likes this type We've of conversation. We've all said this. But like, there's literally not a person listed, on the panel so. that didn't believe that you should be able to question a person to ascertain whether or not their religious belief informs their their rulings and things like that. No one disagreed with that. So that's like beating yes, the dead horse. We okay. all agree. No, they, they did. However, the okay. next step is the next step is if we if it is. So, so with that being said, we all I think we all also agree, I don't think there's a person here that disagrees, that if a person indicates that they have religious bias that's going to influ influence or inform or take precedence over their religious um, rule, I mean, over their um, judicial rulings, then at that point, that would disqualify them. I don't think you a know, person disagreed there either. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. Who disagrees? Hold on, hold on, let me, hold on. Throw me off, me. Um, but uh, Signatural. Um, Signatural said, like, uh, this shouldn't be like disqualifying, right? That's not what um, he said. I wrote well, it down. Hold on. Okay. Hey, Signatural, first of all, uh, I want to say, what, what was your opinion? It's exactly. Down, because down. Um, it sounded to me like it's this shouldn't be a consideration that, like, oh, well, um, like, well, why would we uh, take this? Should be, it should be something that they're like, I feel like it's something that should be in like questioned about, right? In terms of being questioned. Because I yeah. had to reread it. Is, it. is it fair to question people who are nominees religion as it relates to their future role? Now, this specifically, I can just be like, ignore that serious consideration, right? Like, so you're okay, looking at serious consideration, and can, can it disqualify them? And can it disqualify them? Yeah, like, no, it's easy to say, let's question them. It can but never it, disqualify. So what what, what if, do you do with the answer? That's the important question. What if the yeah, religious that's... belief were this follows? I have a religious belief in the spaghetti monster, that's not disqualifying. What would make it okay? I don't so, think that no, would necessarily no, 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 hold, hold, hold on a second. I've got one, I'm I've got an example. Kiss you seriously. Peace go. Okay. What about that would disqualify you from being on the Supreme Court? I would believe in the spaghetti monster. I think it, it, it shows a mind so detached from reality. Oh, so you mean like every other single religion? What do you mean? Well, oh, I, Legitimately, no, 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 it's, it, it's not because it, there's some defense for the other religious beliefs, at least. No, at least, there isn't. I, they're not no, any no, more no. real or not, like based in reality. Not, not based. You read the Bible. I don't know. Not based on its sort of whether or not it's true or not, but based on how you might acquire those beliefs, right? You would acquire those beliefs from being taught as a child or by going to social functions. There's some plausible explanation that says, okay, you're attached to reality, but to, be, well, like, what do you mean attached to reality? You're, this is another really you're bad believe strategy. more popular irrational thing. For you to go so seek out more... the spaghetti monster says something about your state what of mind. What did your parents taught right? you? Your What's parents can... Well, listen. Well, it just says that you, you believe unpopular silly okay. things. Okay. Here, here's, I have an example. Wait, I have a quick okay. example that's different than this flying spaghetti monster that was in years, this conversation. 50 years down the line, um, you could have a situation Okay, where... I hate no religion. Okay, there's you can't distinct. I, I was waiting for opposition from the other side. So yeah, okay, you can't distinguish between them. I'm glad we made that point. I'll let Demon Mama give the better example of what would be by itself disqualifying religious belief. Demon. Here's what I think. In the last conversation we had, we had a discussion about nations, whether they should uh, belong, you know, whether they should have nukes or not. And Fnatic brought up that 
Judeo-Christian values are make us, you know, somehow better at managing nuclear weapons. That's the type of belief that I would say, wait a second, that indicates that you have a very clear religious bias towards Judeo-Christian values. And I believe that would be disqualifying. If you are going to be on the Supreme Court overseeing people of many religions and you have an intrinsic belief that people who are Judeo-Christian are better than other people, that would be disqualifying. That would be disqualifying. Right? Yeah, yeah. If they were the chosen people. I don't know that you... necessarily believing, I mean, I think you could maybe, there's probably some argument you might be able to make about like a flying spaghetti monster Monster, but I don't think it's here or there. The realistic, the more realistic belief is that, hey, if you have a religious motivation for something that would impugn your or, or, or impact your ability to actually be able to do your job as a justice, in which there are many, then you could be denied, How, and you should be why denied. Why do you that. think that would that would interfere with their ability to do their job? Wait, if you have, if you say, if you but ask if they somebody, say, I, I believe this, but I don't let that affect my job. What so if your like, religion was Wait, but then you have to question them. The job. Wait, you have like, to you have to let me finish this this question real quick because if you ask somebody and you're questioning them, which is what we're talking about here, questioning, right? If you question them and it is revealed that they would look fondly upon somebody who's a Judeo-Christian person in the in the court of in a, you know, set of a court, then you have identified a bias that prevents them from being um from justly um, dishing out justice. So they might be able to say Actually, it, but the point is to that? question it. Wait, what do you mean? This is so absurd. Like, what are you actually, but, what are you so actually you motioning at? Right? Susan, this is ridiculous. Susan, this is ridiculous. Let's see, this is ridiculous. If there was a Nazi in full uniform who went up for the judicial hearings, would no, you no, no, say, no. well, he can just separate his Nazism from his judicial rulings? Yeah. That's not would you really say that? Okay. Well, extreme, even more like, so, like, wait a minute, even more so, you don't have to, we don't have to even come up with anything like that, if you ask somebody and you say, listen, there's this case. Let's say we draw up a, draw up a murder. I, I can't, like, come up with the exact questioning route here on the spot. That's be fucking impossible. But say you have, okay, there's a murder. There's all these confounding things. And it just so happens. And all the questions that you ask them, they always side with the person with Judeo-Christian values every single time. Then you would have identified a bias that is impugning their ability well, no, to you actually have to get their reasoning for those decisions. Well, that's Wait, but that's reason. what you're doing! My God, yeah, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Saying, if they happen this to is ridiculous. Are, are you saying there's no belief by itself which would be disqualifying? There's no association that would be disqualifying? No, but no, we're not nothing would be disqualifying. Crazy weird beliefs. We're talking about very common beliefs. Well, so well, well, I'm okay. gonna go on the, on the ridiculous one first. Am I going crazy? Can I make a point? I mean, if it's Am I losing my enough, mind? You could base, uh, like, I understand. You say, well, this you're, you're so ridiculous. I just don't trust you to do your job in an unbiased way. Okay, but that's not so what that's, I'm talking about. So like, then you make the realistic. inquiry, right? Oh, well, yeah. Don't deny it as a matter of category if you are going to accept it for some categories. Th then no, for I'm not makes, denying it as a matter of category, some... but the actual person we're talking about here doesn't seem to have crazy or ridiculous. Wait, wait, wait. But, oh, I, I, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. Common, right? You've jumped from whether or not Amy Coney Barrett. Yeah, yeah Amy Coney Barrett is biased <laughs> to as to you've jumped to that from. Look, if someone acts, if someone has crazy. Hey, I, hello I everyone say, from you know, Hannah Reloaded. Much love. Mwah. We're not. Okay, I just don't perfect. Trust you. That's fine. We're in the perfect. middle of a, a hey, heated debate, so you come in at a good time. Shadows, Welcome back. Happy to have okay, you all. I'd like to make two points. Um, one is not really a point. But I just want to say peace go like these yeah seriously I'm happy to have it um, I'd love I mean our, fuck not it seems like everybody likes like the, the content of, yeah uh, it's gonna know, be fun someone's re religion to the flying spaghetti spaghetti monster a Nazi in full uniform I find that deeply disrespectful hey thank you for the Twitch you Prime know. sub thank you so much it's gone crazy. So I would I would like to make Whoa. that very very clear and I I like I'm I honestly it, it's going it's wild in here. This has been a wild like conversation. Stuff come out of your mouth. But my second point is that when it comes to questioning someone their religious values and whether or would not affect it, I think what you should do is you should point to a ruling on a case and try and dig <gasps> oh, no. deeper and it's see okay. if their religious values are influencing their ruling and not straight up saying Oh well, you have this value. You have this value. You have this value, and, you, and being and like trying to miss. Dylan doesn't this like this conversation. And see if it affects it, which goes back to my opening statement. She has not had a long enough tenure on on the district court for you know someone to actually have circuit court for sorry circuit court for you know the senators to actually have enough cases to you know pick from 
um, and say, I and think, you know, hey, maybe in this case, her deeply held religious beliefs affected the ruling. And then they try and bring up, you know, her opinion she wrote about it, um, her ruling, um, and be like, I, and, you know, for oh, them wow, to try damn. and dig deeper and see if their religious values actually affected her ruling. Okay, can I respond? So, sure. Shadows, when, when I was making those comparisons, I'm not comparing those religious beliefs to the others. You understand how the analogy is working? What I'm saying is there are some beliefs which belief in them alone is disqualifying. I would gave the spaghetti monster example because I thought, imagine if someone were to go up in the middle of Congress and say, ah, I believe in the spaghetti monster. I go to pasta meetings every week. I thought that I would get like support. But here, clearly people here are much more atheistic yeah, that's fair. than I give them credit for. And I, I appreciate that. And the example fails for that reason. But there are certainly some beliefs which are disqualifying, right? Imagine that you believe the, that the reason those beliefs are disqualifying is not just because the beliefs uh you know conflict with uh law it's because you're, you're judging that that person's personal precisely. capability to do the job right? precisely uh, but, but they're so that's fine it, but i mean why, why are you a, dwelling on that argument because we're not talking about a person like that right okay so now wait getting we, back are, to the real well, we world, are though like, you can i just you, like I, no we're I not actually have a, i just want to talk about like this this of this idea of like disqualification so here right i you guys maybe look actually look up how this problem how this process is like handled and it seems like it says right here like you know you get confirmation that the uh, the president will formally appoint someone uh the senate confirms it the constitution does not set any qualifications for us to serve for service of justice thus the president may nominate any individual to serve on the court they don't even have right? to be lawyers yeah exactly course. right they say that um they go through published rule what they usually do is they go through published rulings article speech other background material yep. age health race gender education likelihood of confirmation are also factors to considerations so like if if like the Senate and the president are wacky enough, yes, we could get a wacky fucking person, right? It seems like what, 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 how we get a Supreme Court nominee or a Supreme Court justice on there just depends on the Senate and the president, and that's it. Well, okay? so no, no. So that's what we're really asking, it. what we're re actually asking here is, should Congress like question those justices based on these like ideas, right? Like based on uh, like or, or like oh, basically prodding and seeing if their religion plays any aspect into how they make these decisions uh, with regards to the Constitution, right? That's what we're asking. Yeah, it's a question and of I, I should. It's a question of should. It's a question of. It's a question of should. No. It's a question. Should, of, I mean, and, and to what degree? Yeah, it's a question of should and to what degree, yeah. not a because matter of what's going on now, because we know what's going on. We know what's going on right now. What's going on right now is that there's com there's completely partisan appointments. Just that is just obvious. That's the state that we're in right now. Now, right obviously, now, like before too. Wait, what? Last what? Are, are you so divorced? Uh, do you understand that in this country, uh, someone like Roy Moore was Supreme Court judge in Alabama? You think that there are no judges anywhere who are influenced by their religion to an unacceptable degree? Are you serious? No, but I, I know Amy Coney Barrett doesn't. I mean, okay, well, you can't. Wait, wait, you can't just know that. That's your own partisanship coming out. You'd have, you'd have to ask, right? It what just so happens. Oh, well, it just so happens that, that you know that she agrees with you on everything, so she's not biased. If anything, it's the world that's biased. Um, uh, wait, here. hold on, hold on. Demon Mama, I, I've actually heard last username talk to SA multiple times. Last time I checked, he was a non-religious and cap. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking yeah, about when it comes to political bias. Like this dude is pretty sick. But how could he possibly know? How could he possibly know before asking whether or not someone is a Roy Moore or pasta person or someone disqualifying belief? If he doesn't ask, we can look at. Well, yeah, we, can, we, can, we can actually look at. We can look at the things. Hold on, we can look at the things that Roy Moore. He's an uh, originalist, textualist. He has a very strict, uh, you know, philosophy on in interpreting the Constitution. One that doesn't give her yeah, very man. much leeway to. Okay. Yes. To put any doesn't so, give her any leyway to put personal. Yes. Beliefs. So okay. So I, I agree that her personal philosophy, as expounded on by Justice Scalia and others would not contemplate religious bias taking hold, except that religious bias, which is included in the original meaning of the text. So she would map on any of the original meaning onto the text, but it wouldn't it wouldn't matter her personal belief. That no one is questioning that sort of her yeah. now stated question rationale. Her capability right? to, wait, so we to, wait, just, just to be sure here, we've pivoted, right? We've pivoted to something else that's a more convenient a discuss, discussion. It's a much more convenient thing to discuss, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so, it is a pivot. Okay, so what do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, well, I, I, I wanted to talk about what we were trying to talk about and that you were desperately trying to avoid talking about, which is whether or not we should be questioning these people, whether we, or not we should hold our Senate and our and our representatives. Question them. 
What's that? But you, but you, but you, but you functionally have though. That's the thing. You say you're not, but you argue when I say we should, and then you've tried to pivot to another. No, I say that. that, So so what? So you question them, and they say like you can predict what her answer is going to be to that. Like everything about her legal philosophy basically gives you. Yeah, and that's why you. That's why you do. That's why you do a good job. That's why you do a good job. That's why you actually question hard and you encourage your senators. And yeah, but you, you haven't explained to me how you're going to decide that. Oh right? my God! What, like so what, what do you mean? Example, how? Like, the, what do you mean? I haven't bias. explained to you. Okay. What if they don't? Forever. I already know. I'm fanatic. Yeah. I, I don't even know anymore. I, I'm sorry. I forgot. Just just keep going. This is all right. Signature. All right. So like, poof. the only thing that to me, we're right, hanging I'm out and having a good time right now, like on spicy Senate, debate right, or some bullshit. And I'm like some asshole that doesn't align necessarily what they're going to say or something. Right. Like the only thing you could really do, because like, if you start questioning them, I feel like it would be like what last user name said. Right. And we're also like questioning them about what's going on. Like, they're just going to be like, well, you know, I think this, I think this, and they're just going to tell you what they're going to tell you. Oh, I'm making right? this spicy as fuck. Seat, who, who would, um, right? The topic um, right now like, is I feel like all we can really do is look at their previous should... documents. Look at what they the religion on, of, a, of a Supreme stuff, Court candidate just, be like, considered as it affects, it affects their job. That's really what you got. And that's what right. you got. People Thank make you. statements. Wait, People hold make on. statements. Oh, Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh. To, to Pisco's point. Brett Kavanaugh. That shit show, right? Yeah. If they didn't really Under ask. Pressure? Who knows what he, he would have said? Nothing if we didn't ask. Like, well, like, someone else. Well, someone else came forward, right? Yeah, but the questions, the questions that you have to ask has has to be informed by their body of work. You have to push them on. Okay, so you made this yeah. decision. Why? why? And, yeah. and, and, and then you you keep grilling them until Greetings. they maybe Greetings. expose some sort of Something religious like that. reasoning, right? Yeah, right. Yes. It's, it's informing you your questions. I'm glad you're you learning from it. Questions. Right. See, not to, and and I've, you'd be, I feel you'd be, like we're just going in a loop here. We're just we're once again we are. Well, yes, we are because all we're talking about right now is you guys are trying to press Sig Natural right now on the idea that we should question them. Like no one's disagreeing. Well, okay, with that. I, 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 you disagree. All right, stop it yeah. with the question. I, I I apologize. I fucked up uh, when I designed designed this. I should have said disqualify. Ignore a question. Disqualify. Is it disqualifying? And moving is on. What, is what disqualifying? Certain mm-hmm. levels of religious piety and beliefs that are not in concert with our secular government. I would say if you can, if you can, with um, a certain level of confidence, um, confirm that a religious belief informed a certain ruling, I, I would say that based on what that ruling is, then yes, it can disqualify them. But well, otherwise, no. anyone disagrees. No one here disagrees with that either. I, I do not disagree with that. Literally no one. If you could literally catch them red-handed, admitting that they that they you know I think I'm losing it based on their personal views and not based on the Constitution, that's disqualifying. That's that's, that's why this conversation has been so circular. No one's disagreed yet. And I've known can, this from the beginning. We've known this from the beginning. Well, we you've do done a very poor job part. communicating that. Then we could do the same thing with partisanship. If you have someone who's you know very Republican and has a very unfair ruling towards you know like a public union. Like, I mean, I would get where they're coming from, but, you know, that d- totally disqualifies you from becoming a judge. I, I but think, if the I question think, is, well, should you disqualify them I, just based on the religious no, beliefs, okay. the answer is I, I guess, no. I guess, no, I guess then the answer is why is it disqualifying, right? Okay, so if if we agree that it's because disqualifying... It's ruling, yeah, because okay. he's not saying it's anything. All he's doing is saying we're going in circles think, and uh, talking to brothers. To ask, because Shadow brings up, goes. I think, something ridiculous uh, that, like, unfairly uh, voting for... A union, first of all, will it be unfair uh, about ruling for a union? Maybe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we've seen we've seen okay. them uh, rule for corporations unfairly all the time. For instance, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, not the one who replaced Mark Garland. Blanking my mind. Um, Somebody's what's his name? Gorsuch. 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 Yes, Gorsuch is like oh, famous no. for that, right? So. Um, uh, it's okay. Don't so worry. There'll be another topic after this. Union. One more. Uh, okay, fine. But like, why would a religious um, bias be it's unfair? All like, this is a spicy uh, podcast. Excuse me. Okay, um, okay. so can, so I, can I expound can I... upon that actually? Mm. Yes, go there and then I'll go to Fanatic. Uh, so to expound upon that, I was saying is that the idea is that they may have, you know, you know, analyze a certain case and because of personal political bias, maybe involved a public union, you know, a public union for say teachers or um i can't think of something besides police because if we're talking about like a republican partisanship against you know public unions police are probably not going to be in that because law and order and whatnot but like if they had an un a totally unfair ruling 
towards a teacher's union when you analyze the facts and you know you maybe you talk to a few legal scholars or two because we obviously know a lot of people in the senate yeah. have law degrees but they're like based on the facts of this case you know this ruling is very unrealistic it is totally unfair and they can tell it's tilted like if they can find the idea that is sorry partisan. how would you do this how would you do this about relitigating the an entire case you would have to literally relitigate all their their, their 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 the body of work, right? Like no, not to relitigate it. You'd have to look at the case and the facts and relitigate it. And be like, oh, because that's what they did, right? They looked at it, right? The judge looks at it, um, and uh, they, they they make a decision, right? So we have to make another. Sorry, we have to make another decision. I'm making another ruling on all of them. So all of so no, not case, make another ruling. You you would you would be grilling them on the Senate floor about yeah. this decision yeah it's uh, last year's name is partly right that like what are you really gonna get who's gonna Spencer. actually admit that you know this is really i only ruled this way because of my own personal religious beliefs no one's gonna say that but it doesn't mean that like if hey, we thanks find for the follow, out DFP. Sort of happy to have you gun welcome what to if the they community. have a text message that we find somewhere that says, anybody hasn't followed yet hit that follow button because of religious L L lol fuck women <laughs> right right <laughs> but like of course that would be disqualifying wouldn't it and so it's worth the inquiry and it, there are certain beliefs and the interaction with their positioning on judicial rulings, which would be disqualifying. Correct, Elio? Right. And I would not deny that. But I, I mean, assuming we don't find anything like that, like the question is, should the religious belief itself per se be disqualified? Most of the time, no, okay. probably. Right. I want to go Most through, I want to go like all of the time. Fanatic, and then, um, uh, it, it, I'm not sure if Dean Mong has her hand up, but that, yeah, no, I just fanatic. wanted to comment on this one. Wait, oh, did no, you? No, 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 fanatic. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. So yeah, like this idea that like the, the, you're drawing like a parallel. Oh, thanks, between, like, Under Cruz. I agree. On, like unions and that to like someone like having some sort of religious affiliation, and the reason why the religion thing would be so disqualifying as opposed to the re ruling on some sort of union thing is because specifically embedded in our constitution is to make it, it's is you know uh, the the separation you know of church and state that was added right. So now we recognize at this point that that we can never have something where someone is like literally using their religion to make laws. That's part of the constitution. Right. So then with that being said, that's going to be a distinction. You can't then say, well, now that we've obtained that any form of any bias or any political leanings is now now something that's disqualifying because the other things don't have that same constitutional barrier. That it's true. Cosmic Sean, it's true. So that's very true. You can't make the they're not equivalent. Wait, 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 there are certain political beliefs that would be disqualifying. Right. Like, give me an example. I believe that we should have a national socialist government. That would be disqualifying belief. No. Hey. Oh, but if you, if you're Thank you so much for the sub, Marinara. Uh, Have a wonderful okay. night. So, if you believed in achieving Bye. that Thank socialist you. government through democracy, I don't think that, that a would Nazi be government. Let me put it in different words. I believe the United States should have a Nazi government. In, in Clip it and be, ship it, guys. Well, well, listen. Okay, okay. I don't. I'm not gonna go. Okay, it's really simple. If you have a belief Clip and that ship. can be demonstrably like um, opposed to the Constitution, then that's all going to automatically be um, disqualifying. So yes, a Nazi belief would be opposed to the Constitution. No, say, would be disqualifying. I, I, I believe in the Constitution. I'm not going to do anything unconstitutional. I'm just going to amend the Constitution such that a Nazi government has been placed. I I believe in the Constitution wholeheartedly, and I believe very strongly in the amendment clause, and I want to tune the Constitution through constitutional means such that I have a okay. Nazi government. So yeah, the reason why, again, this doesn't work is because your current belief is in current is in, is in opposition to the Ooh. current um, Constitution. So because wait, of so that... Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. There you go. You want to do that thing again? Let me finish. So because your belief currently is in opposition to the Constitution, then the thing that I said still stands. If, Not you, hold, if, if you hold beliefs that are in op opposition to the constitution then it is disqualifying it's not an opposition to the constitution it is you're, 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 i only want to do things that are constitutional i okay I so wanna, then if you want to do things that are constitutional but you, you just you just said so what if a person wants to violate the constitution but the way they'll violate it is by amending the constitution but their current beliefs are something that would be in the uh based on that future violation are that, you suggesting that that are you suggesting that uh, Supreme Court nominees can have opinions about how they would change the Constitution? If I want to no, change the Constitution what... at all, I can't be a, a Supreme Court nominee? Or no, a, not, a... No, no. Mm. Okay, then. If, uh, no, 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 no
if and if during their questioning it was to come out that they had very strong beliefs that were in the yes, constitution to the current inter- um uh, the, to the current interpretation of the constitution it would be disqualified about which is which 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 is why which about is why private which is, which is which is why as i'll finish again when i'm done then you can go ahead and interject which is why when it came to brett kavanaugh's hearing they specifically and and it's been a pretty historical precedent that typically um th- those people will not give they will not speak on what how they would rule on specific they won't cases care. As people will look for the context so that's why we what, have what, what about, what about private right? racism i someone brett Kavanaugh that comes up and says i believe the white race spirit of the black that's race. unconstitutional that it's not unconstitutional to have a private belief on racism it's, un- un- it's unconstitutional because it would violate um, I don't, I don't, I don't, wait wait okay, hold on a second hold wait on. this is something i really I'm want to say i'm not entertaining I'm this if you're saying that okay, okay, hold on hold on yeah, what about this then uh amy coney barrett is part of religion right like her her sect right is extremely patriarchal putting men uh, at the top and women in submission of them right this has been established okay mm-hmm. so um if that's the case right then that's unconstitutional then we should disqualify her is right? that how is, is it unconstitutional okay hold on I mean, can I... That's, that's what you're saying right like, yeah. no, no, no 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 i'm not what i'm saying is no, no 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 i've only made the general statement and i'll say it one more time if something is unconstitutional then it is disqualifying now if you want to if hold on if you want to, if you want to walk down this idea that maybe her patriarchal belief um, or, or, of, of a, a I got something here. I got something here. Sure, is somehow unconstitutional. Then we can have that conversation. And if it is determined, hey, thanks for the follow, Evans Ghost. Happy to have yes, you. Yes, then that would be disqualifying. Well, However, on, can I, I think you have a big that. thing to prove in that situation in, in, in this scenario that that's unconstitutional. Okay, okay you fanatic, gotta, you gotta can I ask you something? Wait, wait, fanatic, can I ask you something? Uh, of course, ask away. Don't ask me. What if someone has a belief that has nothing to do with the Constitution but is deeply demonstrable? Like, what if? like a Supreme Court nominee who, you know, is very left-wing comes out and suddenly says, you know, I believe the whole of Demore, the story of the whole of Demore is Nazi propaganda and I believe what's happening in Xinjiang is actually Western propaganda. Like, should they be disqualified for we'll that give hideous of a belief? It matter. It, like, 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 I don't know what we're getting at here. We're just masturbating at this point. Like, the only thing that really matters is, like, l- like we said earlier, looking at their body of work, looking at how they make decisions based on the constitutionality of any given issue, right? Uh, we have, like, people in the Supreme Court right now that have their own personal beliefs that they don't, like, let influence their decisions when it comes to Supreme Court uh, cases, right? Like, I, I don't know what we're arguing here. I, like, okay, well, here's what I was going to say. Wait, if I, I think I can help answer that question. And I was I was supposed to go next after Fanatic yeah. anyway. So let me just slip in here and say something, which is that we're not, like, when we're considering confirming a judge, they're not the only option. And it is for one of the highest offices of power. So the standards should be very high. So, for example, if we should, in my opinion, we should encourage our senators, the people who are in charge of confirming it, and our presidents who are in charge of appointing, we should encourage them to be very choosy. So if somebody comes up to the table who um, says, yeah, in my personal life, I believe in, you know, like genocide. I believe genocide is a good thing in certain circumstances. We could go... Why don't we not choose that one? Yeah. Um, and, yeah they they and, wouldn't be chosen anyway because it'd be unconstitutional. Well, of course, yeah, but, okay, but it's, it's not, not, it's not, it's not, it's it's not, not about the constitution. It has it's nothing to do with the constitution. Not being politically viable, right? Like, there's no reason Congress would approve that judge because it, it's not politically viable for like any party. Because I don't want a judge who believes that. I don't want right, a judge right. who is racist. So, I mean, look, look, yeah, yeah, I got you. And listen, I, I think, well, God, yeah. So, if you want to get into this opinionated idea of like, yeah, do we think it's a good idea? Of course not. Like, of course, it'd be terrible. But what I'm saying is that there's a pretty, pretty established bar that we have for whether or not someone is confirmable or not and that a lot of time has to do with like uh like you know it, obviously we we obviously have the violation of high crimes in society whatever the same same rulings that we have for whether or not you can impeach somebody and on top of that if they are if we determine that they hold beliefs that are unconstitutional or whatever like then that that those are those are typically the things that we would disqualify over but it's not um, just about it's not just about unconstitutionality is what we're saying what we're saying private is that belief. Is that, yeah, you could have private beliefs that put your judgment into question, your sure. ability. I agree. Yeah. And if that's the case, then the enti- then the answer to this question should be a resounding yes, all across the board, that there can be circumstances in which your private religious beliefs can impact your ability to do a good job on the court or 
The other thing, and this is one that people... No one wait, 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 hold on. Game. Hold on a second. We're not done yet. The other part of this is that there's another thing that we do. And this is a, a common standard when we're um, measuring for things like, um, you know, like corruption, is we want to avoid the appearance of that as well, because we also have to maintain That's that there, right. has, there has to be faith in the institution. And if you have somebody up there who maybe they really do do a good job um, uh, keeping their um, their religion separate oh, from their beliefs, but they yeah. do a bad job at appearing it like that, like, for example, maybe they're going out and, and like, constantly going to anti-abortion rallies, and then you go, well, you're going to be ruling on abortion. Don't you think you're a little bit biased? And they go, no, 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 I assure you, I keep it separate. Well, a lot of people will no longer believe in the that. power. Yeah, they'll but no longer believe in the power. For deceptive people. For no, who are no, no. oh my oh, god, that's so that's I mean, yeah. so ridiculous. No, I can't even believe that you would say something like that. That's like that's like saying so like if you're it, that that's like saying like if you have a justice system where people get asked questions by a judge, you're selecting for deceptive people. Like, no, you have to question. You have to question these things. And it Hell, is I do believe it's possible for someone to to successfully demonstrate that their beliefs are separate. But I think that that has to be a high bar, a very high bar, especially when we're considering the amount of power that the Supreme Court has shown that it has in the current day. It has to be a very high bar. Either. Does anyone disagree with that? Because I don't think any of us disagree with that either. Well, you just said that, or at least made a, 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 a implication or suggestion that somehow the appearance of impropriety is a is a, a sort of improper thing. It's for funny. Us to Every single time if I make a point, it's not impropriety. No, the he appearance didn't. of having of of having personal beliefs. Wait, what really? keeps happening here is that. Y'all, I don't even know what arguments you're making. It sounds like you're arguing just for the fun of it. Because every time I make an argument, you then go, well, I believe that. I do believe that. I believe no, that. No, you keep making the same freaking argument. Wait, wait that was... Oh. How is that the same... Over again. This is what I've been saying okay. over and over again. So what is your belief? Wait, 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 no, wait, wait. Wait, before you freak out, because you're fucking losing it right now. You're fucking losing your cool right now. Let me finish. Let me finish. So over and over again, you repeatedly keep going down this thing because just even your last in your last um, last uh, comment, you were missing. So again, yes. Yeah, so that's why we get the question again. No one's questioning whether or not they can be questioned. Oh my god, that's not oh god. that's not what I was saying. Nor are we. You I did say that again. I can't. You I said can't. it again. Wait, wait, wait. So here's what I want to ask. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, we just, we're talking about disqualification. We've moved on from that. I don't know why you're stuck on this. Stuck on this. No, 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 right. no, no. I'll tell you. I'll, but, good. I'll tell you. But, I'll tell you why. Wait, no, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Let me. Why don't you let me say? He talked to me. I'm going to respond. I'll tell you why. It's because once again, Demon Mama made the statement. So that's why we should be able to at least question this. Question that's why. So you and, can disqualify them po possibly. And, I said both of those things. I said that it could be disqualifying. And, and Absolutely. When multiple ways so let me ask you this wait no wait you got you had your turn you had your turn now it's my turn you had your turn now it's mine so okay, now that it's your turn minutes. what <laughs> nice try i love that one that's one of my favorite ones plays right into the sexist stereotypes too hey um let me ask you this what do you actually believe because you've sat here and you've picked at everyone else's argument, but you won't actually make a fucking argument so i want to hear what you actually believe do you think that it's not possible for someone to be disqualified for any religious belief Anyone, because I'd like to hear you actually defend your position for once instead of picking stupid bullshit nonsense and then saying that you agree with us afterwards. Okay. Oh, sure, I got you. Sounded Great. fire. So really quickly, Pisco, do you remember when you were questioning me and I was answering your question and I kept on reaffirming my belief over and over again and I'll say it one more time. literally can't answer the question. question. It's really simple, okay? I believe that, of course, obviously, if, if you Amazing. Can ascertain that a person is, is um, it has beliefs that are unconstitutional, then it would obviously be um, something that would be disqualifying. I also believe that if a person was, if you can get to I'm a point fucking where you losing it. that a person uh, shows some sort of like, uh, I don't know, gross incompetency, uh, gross, like, uh, you know, gross, gross bias. Coward! Then, you know, uh, I, I guess then, yeah, then that would probably be something that, you, that I, again, you know what it is? It really boils down to if a person is This is a wild bias, ride. It probably wouldn't end up disqualifying them, but it would probably be something that, as uh, of the Senate, should. Grossly on, biased isn't. Listen. Okay, so I can't finish my. So do you want me to finish? Do you want me to finish my sentence or not? There's a lot there that I okay, want. To... I got you. I got you. So let after, me finish after, it. After, then you can get to it. After. How many times do I got to tell you that? Let Manic, me finish my go. freaking sentence. Thank you. So yeah. So yeah. The idea would be that a person can shield, be grossly shield, shield. biased, and it probably wouldn't be something that should be disqualifying because I don't think that there'd be anything like codified that would disqualify that person. God, I've However, I've absolutely wrecked house today. And it wouldn't confirm such a person for those reasons. But I don't know that it would be legally disqualifying. Is my point. What do you mean by unconstitutional? Yeah, I don't know what unconstitutional. That, like, like that's a complete mis. Like that has nothing to do with the conversation we're having. We're talking about is this something that the Congress should take sure. into account? Yeah. 
Yeah, like when they're making the decision. Qualification. First of all, I don't know what an unconstitutional belief is. Well, I just said that. Right. I just said yes, they should take it into account, and there should be a reason why they shouldn't confirm right, it. That's what we're arguing. We're not arguing whether you could like. Yeah, straight flush. Sure. I just answered that in my statement. Did you not hear okay, me? Okay, but, but in your statement, there were a couple of standards that you put out. One is multiple. Yes, it's multi, multifaceted. I don't know sure. what an unconstitutional belief belief is. Who litigates that, right? You you seem to suggest that anyone who has a disagreement with the current constitutional framework, whatever that is. By the way, people disagree on the current constitutional framework. That's disqualifying. That seems like a weird standard. Then you said somehow someone who's grossly biased wouldn't be disqualified. I don't know how we can sit here and say someone who's grossly biased isn't disqualified from being an associate justice of the United States. Like how is that the case? I'm sorry. Maybe well, you misheard. The, maybe, I've got you. Maybe you misheard the part where I said that they probably wouldn't be legally disqualified, but they probably shouldn't. Be no one would be legally confirmed. disqualified. Of this, right? There's no qualifications necessary. It, right? It's far too broad. Yeah, at this point, like. I don't uh, know. Sure. So it is. It, that's and that's something that Sig Natural pointed out is that it is. I think you could be a baby. I, I think they could nominate a baby and have it confirmed in the Senate, and there wouldn't there would be no legal remedy there. I mean, what would Check. be the remedy? Yeah. There's. Yeah. They literally can. They yeah, I think it's actually right. do okay, this. So we're not obviously not talking about Aaron Trumper. Okay, so we're so now we're just going into the Aaron. subjective idea of of what no, would be the limits, you, right? Right. So is someone who's grossly biased disqualified in like our common usage of that word? Okay, so so now we're moving no, past we, legal disqualification and. This Whoa. is where we all were, I think. Okay, maybe. Yeah, it's really maybe funny that you know. like literally so, so, got all so, freaked out at me. I ask you a direct question, you immediately pivot and start talking to Pisco instead of me. I would love it if you would answer what your actual opinion is instead of yeah, just I mean, sitting I've there. said I'm saying well, it now. I've just said it again. Moment, How many times moment. do I have to say it? Demon Lord have mercy. He, he How said, many times? Demon Mommy, he said that someone who has an unconstitutional belief or who's gr grossly biased. We said unconstitutional belief is not okay, but grossly biased would not be disqualified. Wait, 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 no, 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 wait, 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 don't, don't stop those standards there, are. Don't stop, no, don't stop there, what else did I say, what, what oh, was if they were extremely what? reckless, or, um, no, no, I'll do it for you, I get it, since you didn't hear me, I, probably, I got it, that's probably the point where you cut me off, so what I said was, a person who was grossly biased, he's sweating, be legally he's, disqualified, he's sweating, but obviously, we would hope that the Senate would, would not be able, okay, um, that we should not confirm that person, is that not the statement that I made, okay, good, I got your quotation, yeah, you're right, if it's gross, my, my understanding of the word bias is that it, it means l allowing your your personal beliefs to affect your decision or allowing any kind of beliefs to affect your decisions when they're not supposed to, rather than simply having beliefs. Is that what you mean by bias, Fanatic? Who, me? No. No. What? What do you mean by bias? What the word means like just just a, a specific well, that's what it means to me am i oh no, no, okay. so I we can look it up we can, we can look it up on merriam webster but i'm pretty sure, sure bias whatever. is just a, 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 a just well, okay you i got that. you it just means a predisposition towards a given belief like a, a, a um yeah a, just a predi predisposition towards given beliefs well i'm grossly that's what, that's biased, what bias is. judicial philosophy do we do we stop that gross by i mean I, I, I amy coney barrett is grossly biased to originalism she's Grossly biased to her style of interpretation. Well, that's there why he's being appointed. I, I don't know. That would just be biased. I don't know. I, I guess maybe then I should probably. Like, I, get to, I should, of, I should, I should, I should explain the, the, the quali qualifier grossly, okay, so I guess, right? I'll say on this side of the house, I think we're worried about certain kinds of bias, namely exactly. like, like racial bias, sure. like religious bias. Those mm -hmm. are the kind of biases. Sounds like constitutional worried. bias to me, but go ahead. Well, those not, it's not nothing unconstitutional about being racist. Or being what? a racist. Think about how many racist justices we've had in the past. You must oh. know that that some of those seminal decisions in Supreme Court history have been so extremely racist from the from the bottom. Sure. From Marshall so that's my point. Now, but that, right? Yeah, that's what I got you. That's why we went to this qualifier earlier, where I said it has to be a, based on the current interpretation. He's so weaselly. Because I'm I'm very well aware, just like you are, Pisco, that pre previous to to uh, to Roe v. Wade, and like it, obviously that that before the Supreme Court review, uh, the Supreme Court ruled separate was equal. Do you remember that? So in that point in time, yeah, then yeah, it would have been a problem. But now, if we were to have a justice that was literally arguing the idea that separate would like to, uh, to argue for the case of separate on. but equal, it would be unconstitutional. You're cutting me off, man. I got Claire, you. Go ahead. Clarence Thomas, I just had to stop you here because it's important. Clarence, Clarence Thomas doesn't believe in stare decisis. He thinks we should get rid of Roe v. Wade. He says it almost in every I opinion. Agree. There's I nothing agree. wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong innately with thinking like we should. Um, Maybe we should have a more capacious view or less capacious view of stare decisis that's saying that we should overturn precedent. You think that someone who disagrees with the court's precedent is disqualified just because they disagree with the precedent? I think when it comes time to like confirming them into the seat, then yeah, it probably would be that way, which is why they've always abstained from answering such questions before.
Speaking okay, but some of the best precedents in our thanks for the uh, follow specter of syndicalism country's history have been uh, sort of overruling of prior incorrect decisions. Sure. Yes, so I yes. guess we're, we're running into a problem here. Is I think in your mind you're you think that I'm making some terrible argument that we should never overrule or override anything that's ever been previously established by any justices. It, it and that's not my, like, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's not my argument. What my argument is that when it comes to confirming someone now, and yeah, Pisco's good. Pisco's smart. That's fuck. Shouldn't ha already have I don't always agree with them. Established and vocalized opposition, because then at this point, the appointee system becomes some sort of tribalistic warfare, as opposed to us, the idea that we're going to be getting as unbiased judges as possible. Okay, so Amy so Coney Barrett disqualified because she disagreed with the court's ruling on the ACA on the taxi provision. She disagreed with, I'm sure, the, the original ruling and the, and the rationale for Roe v. Wade. So she's disqualified, right? She disagrees. She disagrees with our congressional or sorry our constitutional precedent as expounded by the supreme court therefore she's unqualified right i i, I don't i don't know her if if, if her stance on the roe v wade situation because obviously that was uh whatever if, if her stance true 100 percent. Uh, that's, that's not what i said if her stance again can be determined to be like religious based and i think yeah that would be obviously disqualifying in that situation but as we know now current sitting supreme court justices already uh, disbelieve in that you know they they, they already like uh like like okay, never thought about a problem. <laughs> okay. all right okay um so uh we'll uh do closing statements we won't go to the next topic um these two topics uh filled in a, a shit little time holy crap um and i enjoyed arguing about it um but we got okay, the last so one coming which is gonna be wild um, and then i uh, will we'll wild. go on to our walk on panel oh. um where audience members can i guess that's uh, it we're gonna talk afterwards remember stick afterwards. around we're doing we'll stuff on of my own afterwards on panel would love for you to to be a part of it okay um you so uh, out while we're doing closing yeah sure we can do that um uh uh dylan burns tv oh sick gay um, fish he's been having no streams uh, not uh, ending you fool uh, uh, we're uh, still going on uh, afterwards stick around um while this is all uh, been he's down. been religious for a while i'm pretty sure yeah no i know i'm just kidding man just calm down i'm just kidding i know dylan burns is religious uh um hey wow. uh, dylan how you doing we, we just been listening to religious tunes reading the bible you know discovering god you know that's what we've been doing over at dylan burns tv you know uh yeah ever ever since the opening statement when i heard someone say well it, what if they make an oath to their god over over state and uh I, I checked out because that's literally every religion i mean i don't know the religion who's like okay we're third in line actually it's first state then it's uh your job and then us after that i just checked out and was like okay well i'm gonna just read my bible i'm just gonna read my bible Hey, hey, Dylan. Personal question: uh, Do you ever, uh, do you ever uh, check it on lecture fans' Wednesday Bible studies? I feel like they might be for you. Uh, no, not not really. Um, uh, I, I I mostly just do it myself, or go to, or you know, I, I, I there's a local church that I go to, or I just do it at home by myself. Okay, uh, you might dig it. I don't know, but. Okay, so um, uh, Dylan Burns, I want you to uh, shout yourself out. Um, and please, uh, everyone, uh, wait around until everyone's done before you leave. I, I really appreciate it if you could do that. Um, so uh, Dylan runs a fantastic podcast, the Deep Be Podcast, on Friday nights. It's amazing. I was there uh, last Friday. We actually had a good conversation. I was there with Pisco, um, and we had a lot of fun there. Um, and Pisco was just as peace goes he was today um but <laughs> I, mean, better vibe. Oh, I, I was i just came from the gym i'm sorry i don't uh, know you you will always give off gunner vibes to me honestly i'm a gunner i don't know what that means you seem like you were though. in school i uh, maybe no, when i was with 2l i don't know what does it <laughs> mean i don't know what that means it, it's like a law school term someone like raises their hand and answers every question in class i wasn't that person but people still <laughs> called me a gunner even though i, I didn't like for exams. No, you just give off those vibes. Oh, I got yeah. three shadows. That that's exactly what he, I think he's like. Your fan to us. is I wild. Think is, <laughs> wild right winger Trump second, simp. Shadow, I think you got you got it right. You like hearing uh, about but, how good hey. Trump is. Um, but hey, hey uh, thanks Burns, for the one um, bit. Uh, the homie Dylan Burns. Appreciate it. I uh, would put some respect in his name because he's been so uh, kind to us. Hey, channel. thank Dylan you. Dylan Burns, shout yourself out. Uh, I'm actually gonna shout somebody else out tonight. I'm gonna shout out Jesus Christ. I'm gonna ask everybody to please. Hey, go online, thank you. Learn about the good word. Uh, get safe. It's not too late, you know. It's not too late, you know. Um, it's not I too mean, late. You know, it's never uh, too late. The sound is sweet. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. Now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So instead of subbing to me on Twitch or following me, I'm just gonna ask you to go find the good Lord. How about that?
Okay. Well, that's wow. yeah, that's all the action. Fair enough. All right. Thank you, uh, uh, Dylan Brown. I believe in she left us. I believe in direct action. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Based. All right. Uh, well, maybe some other day. All right, uh, Sig Natural, uh, <laughs> buddy. Uh, uh, thank you for coming and thank you for giving uh, your interesting perspective. Thank you for being um, always calm. I have, the, uh, and then he leaves. Okay, all right. Um, uh, Dylan, sorry, uh, uh, Sig Natural. Um, uh, thank you for always being calm. I've never seen you like fly off the handle. That means once again you're a better streamer than I am because I fly off the handle plenty of fucking times. <laughs> well, at least not in front of me. Fair. You've never fly off the handle. Um, uh, but you're muted, so you're not that much of a better streamer than I Yeah, it just seemed like my uh, <laughs> wasn't as passionate about these issues, but that's okay. All right, yeah, it's, you want to fly off the fucking handle? All right. But no, um, <laughs> but no I was going to say that, yeah, my fucking, like, it's got to be the right topic, okay? And I trust Thanks me, for the okay? bits. I'll get there at some point. But, um, usually I fly off the handle, people are being really rude, but you usually mitigate that, so it's fine. Um, goodness, what can I say? In terms of, like, um. Don't worry, Kasky. <sighs> We're gonna do more I streaming after this. Don't worry. Being like, like my my online radicalization pipeline pretty much started with atheism and everything. So like, it's really weird talking about religion as, as a big topic here and finding myself on the on the side of like, well, I, but hey, should thanks for the bets. Appreciate it. Them, but I'm like, no, I don't think you should really just get rid of them solely on that. Only if like you dig in their history, you find some pretty yike shit, and that's pretty yay. Much it for thank me. you. Um, but yeah, appreciate them. Uh, they help. I'm Signatural27. I like to go on panels like this. I have some pretty good takes. I'm told. I I, I am surprised. That oh I have no! Some really good takes. No I'm food poisoning, Casky. Like them and that I always have to come in and enhance bucks. your panel. So if you want me to enhance your panel, okay, as long as it is confirm confound with this one, all right, I would totally like to come on. It'd be great, okay. <laughs> Uh, as Sig Natural has triple A rated uh, 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 opinions man, and perspectives. So uh, I highly endorse him. Like, seriously, highly endorse him. He's an amazing guy. And I am uh, so thankful that he decides to spend just a little bit of his time, a little bit of his day, a little bit of his week with us. Thank you so much, uh, Sig. Really appreciate it. Yeah, okay. Sig, you should uh, check out uh, Tiberius D. He does a lot of open panels and he's a oh, uh, cool guy. <laughs> So like okay. some Nazi, like what was? It? No, 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 he's not a Nazi. No. He's not oh, a Nazi. Okay. No, no, no. Sensual. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sensual. Okay. He uh, said some yuck shit on Twitter. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, wait, he did. I think so. We can talk. I mean, he is. I mean, he is a sensual. Okay. Right? Is he? I haven't so heard that, that. That'll be for another day. Um, and we can get Tiberius on here to defend himself, maybe. Yeah, I'm um, sure he will. We'll yeah. See um uh, mind waves tv thank you mind waves um hey for thanks for the follow amazing, dumpling uh, deity uh, uh, views of your crotch i've been enjoying them um, hell yeah <laughs> uh mind waves we're always happy to have you always happy to see your stunts um it adds flavor to the panel um, <laughs> that no one else has been breaking i don't see you guys doing stunts right you guys, come on, step up your fucking game. All right, True, right? honestly, I'm not getting enough credit over here. Now, um, on the real though, I got nothing else to say. Um, all you fucking nerds, get outside, get a skateboard, do some kickflips. That's all I gotta say. Um, you can find me Mindways TV everywhere. That's it. All right. Um, don't leave yet. God damn it, don't leave. Uh, all right. Um, next, uh, we'll go to last year's name. Last year's name. Thank you for being here. Thank you um, as always. The media. L U. Um, also, yeah, you can't have a final statement on this. Um, I've been kind of blowing past it, but if you want to say something else, you can say that uh, on, on this. But uh, no, L <laughs> L.U., um, as always, coming in uh, with the hot save for my panels. Um, you've done it again and again, and I really appreciate it. I, I wish I didn't have to rely on you, but um, you know what? Uh, it's tough getting uh, people with diverse views uh, to come on Twitch panels. It's really difficult. It's a big fight. Um, but uh, really last year's name has been kind fun. enough um, um, to put himself out there, even though he knows so many people are going to be against him. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. He's always ready to fight. Sorry, right, we'll talk about stuff. Ask. Don't worry. Not, and it's not over that, yet. I am so grateful. Thank you for being here. Last year's name. Um, the third topic would have been really great. I was hoping for that one, but yeah, uh, happy to help when I can. And uh, you know, that's where people have been against me. I'm used to that. I, I kind of like it actually. Um, and I do want to give a final statement on on this topic. Um, we kind of, I think we kind of avoided talking about the main important question for most of this. Um, the Supreme Court, I think the best that you can expect from the Supreme Court is for it to be a, a, a very um, objective, impartial, sort of robotic mechanism for interpreting the Constitution and, and restraining the government from, from violating it. Um, and that's... 
Oh yeah. And, and in that light, um, I actually I did, but I don't know why it came off. Um, the justices as as doing a, a particular job, a very um, specific kind of mechanical objective job, like fixing a roof. Right. It's a little harder than fixing a roof. A little more nuanced, but fundamentally, that's what it's about. So, I would, you know, would I hire a um, a, a a religious person to fix my roof? Sure, if they they were good at fixing roofs, and their religious views were like fairly not bizarre, then uh, then why not? I, I don't. I'm not worried about their religious views affecting um, their ability to fix my roof. If there was evidence that they were that it was that like they had made religious roofs in the past or something. Uh, then I'd be like, okay, wait a minute. You're obviously not such a good. Definitely, roof fixer. this is a great. Um, this is a great example if, uh, for sure. If, if they had some crazy personal views, like they're a Nazi or a racist or something, I also probably wouldn't hire them to fix my roof. Not because I'm worried about having a, a Nazi roof, but just because that's a that's a really weird sort of antisocial uh, belief to have, and I, I wouldn't trust someone like that and I, I want to trust America whip is different than mail responsibility to fix my roof, it's right? male like but so um when it comes to the supreme the supreme court I think you should you have to at the end of the day just try to get try to evaluate whether someone is competent at doing their job whether they're smart um uh, whether they're capable uh how good are they, are, are they at fixing the roof tastes um, very different to you know uh, interpreting the constitution um, I like mayo, but I if hate if they have religious Miracle views, Whip. but they say, you know, I don't let those religious views affect my decisions, and they have some evidence that that backs that up in their past decisions, and you can't, you know, find any particular reason to to doubt that, and you kind of have to give them the benefit of the doubt, the same way we give the benefit of the doubt to to people doing all sorts of other jobs. Um, I think that's the best you can expect from the the Supreme Court treating it as this kind of this kind of uh, you know partisan activist thing, where I just want people with the right views on the court, it is generally a very um, destructive approach. It's one that's that has sort of emerged in the last I don't know fifty years or so, and it, it's not a good thing. I think the Supreme yeah, Court yeah, that's pretty shit take. Um, doesn't it's not right. supposed to be that, don't and worry. it shouldn't be that, and you should do everything you can to avoid it becoming that. Okay. No boycott Israel, we don't. And with that, um, thanks for having me on. It's been good. Uh, come check out my stream sometime. Last underscore username here on Twitch. And uh, good talk, guys. And he's a really good guy. I really appreciate him always. Uh, uh, well, not always. Well, um, uh, being uh, kind enough to take time on his day when he's available uh, to help us out. Thank you I so hear much. That, I hear that Nazi rules have a bad uh, habit of being a firebomb. Oh, I'm sorry. I really stopped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Um, Interesting metaphors, uh, last year's name. I think I'll leave it at that, but interesting metaphors here. Um, okay, um, so uh, we're going to go to uh, Shadows. Uh, Shadows, um, before you give your uh, statement, I want to say thank you, Shadow, so much for, for coming through. I um, really appreciate you. Uh, I think you held your own very well, especially when um, the whole world was against you on uh, the first topic. True. Um, but like, and, I, and I like that about I like that about people who can, um, when they're in that situation, when everyone's against them, who can... Um, uh, clearly state their points, uh, clearly argue their points, and even give ground if they feel like they should give ground. Um, yeah. So I just want to say, Shadows, that like uh, very much appreciate you uh, coming on. Um, thank you so much, and I'd love to have you uh, again in the future. Um, Shadow, shout yourself out and give a closing statement. Um, yeah, I, I just, closing statement-wise, I agree a lot with what last username said. Um, this analogy can actually be transferred over to a business who's hiring, and Basti has talked a lot about it. Um, which I guess transitions me to my closing statement. You know, if you're a fan of Bastier, if you like neoliberal shills, you should definitely come check me out because I am one a massive neolib shill. Um, uh, I, it was good to be here. I want to give a shout out to Kurt for bringing me here because I'm not really making an effort to network, network right now. Since, that was you know, actually cringe, genuinely school, so cringe. But shout out to that sorry. dude for bringing He's me a baby. on. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like... Um, talking about public policy, really enthralled in it and like how to make actual change. You know, that's a big thing I'm on. Or if you're just a freedom loving capitalist, he sees uh, which I know you don't have many of on your community, which is fine. You know, you have a leftist channel. I mean, it's cool to chat with people from with different perspectives. But you know, if you if you do like watching Bastier, I would recommend you come out and check me out. Uh, you might find me interesting. And um, 
yeah, uh, it was good being here. And also last username, uh, a friend of mine recommended that I should talk to you about philosophy sometime because I'm really not about it um, and find it really boring. And he claims that you could make it very interesting for me. So if you want to do that sometime, I'm down. Um, yeah. Uh... Oh, that's interesting. Um, endorsement from LDU. Um, okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> I see what he's doing there. But anyway, uh, yeah, thank you. And um, we'd love to have a more neoliberal shills around um, because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, no, it's good to talk to people. Always good to bully them. Um, opinions. So we really appreciate that. That's what we, we also appreciate Bastiat. Um, okay. So uh, next we will go to Demon Mama. Demon Mama, thank you so much um, uh, for being here. Thank you so much. Um, uh, for the amazing opinions, for uh, the uh, impassioned um, speeches. <laughs> I think you and I... Got real quick. She did a wonderful job tonight on like every single topic. I just wanted... I thought you thoroughly won. If there's a winning, I thought you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have to agree. Um, but I'm going to be a partial moderator. Oh, yeah. so no, I've actually really enjoyed oh. Demon Mama. I think we actually have a lot in common. I would actually like to talk to you more in the future. Hell yeah. Because um, I think we might have an interesting time. Um, so, uh, Demon Mama, thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind of to uh, share your time with my community. Um, shout yourself out and please give us a closing statement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my closing statement on this is just that um, I don't think we should be um, like credulous with, you know, people's immediate claims when we're considering one of the most important positions on in the country. The Supreme Court, there's like it's it's a limited seat in, in for, for a reason. We should be very picky with that, in my opinion. And that means that we should be willing to question people's beliefs and why they have them. Anyway, if you liked what you saw here, come follow me, Demon Mama Live on, on uh, Twitch, your Demon Mama on Twitter. I'm going to drop my links in the chat in just a second, so you'll be able to see those. Um, afterwards, I do a Q&A session and de usually debates if anybody wants to fight. So if you didn't like what I had to say and you want to come tell me why, you could pop over to my chat afterwards and I'll debate the fuck out of you. Um, it'll be really fun. Um, but yeah, uh, give me a follow and uh, come hang out sometime. Uh, thanks a ton for having me on tonight, Prime. It was great. All right. Thank you. Um, and yes, please give her a follow. Um, I really appreciate uh, their opinions. Okay. Um, Fanatic. Mr. Fanatic. Um, sorry, I had to put some respect on that name. Uh, Fanatic, thank you uh, for being here. Thank you for being as impassioned as you literally always are. Um, when you're ready for it. Oh, man, you're ready for it. Um, so... Fanatic. Um, first of Don't all, worry. I hope we're you still doing stuff afterwards, to across, Tom Bombadil. Um, I hope um, that didn't happen. I, 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 I think you felt you had trouble uh, previously, so I, I, I hope I was able to to make sure that you got the gist of what you wanted to come across, that you didn't feel like you were being um, mischaracterized. Um, hey, Lasso. Uh, good to see I really you. I appreciate you coming on. I hope you had a good time. Welcome to the community. Fanatic. Um, uh, hey, thank you so much, Ellen. Sure. Deeply um, appreciate I just it. I really just agreed with pretty much everything last username said. Uh, I think that it just makes all the sense in the world. Uh, I just, I think the thing that kind of set me off is I, I really didn't get a chance to address it. But in the beginning, uh, Demon Lama said something about the idea about, uh, like, yeah, if a person's made a vow towards religion, then that should be maybe possibly disqualifying. And it's like, or, or like to having their religion be like something over, like, you know, like, like having preeminence and it's like well I, I don't know i feel like that's literally every religion it's like like mm -hmm. literally embedded in like profession of like christianity or like um you know islam or like in, in like pretty much in judaism like it is literally supposed to be the preeminent thing in everyone's life so the idea that like that would be disqualifying would mean you wouldn't have any justice because like the vast majority e easily um i mean even right now like 88 percent of our current like uh of our current congress is religious so yeah that just sounds like so ludicrous um but overall, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I just don't think I'm capable. Like, it's just too much. Uh, the Zen thing just doesn't work for me. I got to let niggas know how I feel. And especially if I'm being, like, interrupted and stuff or mischaracterized or misquoted or straw man. Like, oh, nah, I hope nah, he comes nah, on nah, after. Nah, 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 nah. You got you to gotta stop. Um, and it was, I feel like it was happening from two different angles. So I got all fiery. And then my music didn't even help. So now I feel like my song's a fraud. Uh, the song that I'm talking about that's fraudulent is an album called Soundscapes. And it's a wonderful body of work, but it just isn't enough to overtake... <sighs> This fiery personality that is fanatic. Oh, I'm sorry, Cash. Embedded in me. 
I'm always like ready to go. I'm amped. I had some freaking power up by Lotus Energy, and it gives me all of the energy. I was gonna fall asleep earlier, especially on the other topic, and then it woke me to freak up. And now I'm like all here. Oh no I'm no! Ready, I'm ready I can to turn go. that off. I want to come. Yeah, let me turn that off. Mama and Pisco and everybody else that would disagree with me. There we go. It's off. Stuff. Like I, I want it. I want the action. I want the smoke. So we can have it. Whenever y'all want it, I'm ready for it. All right, anyway, I love you guys. Uh, thank you. Even Mama says that you can um, uh, talk to her right after uh, the words. She's ready for it. Sure. Um, I think we're down. I'm down. If you really, if you want this smoke, let's get it. When we're done with this, when they do the walk on, let's get it. Um, but yeah, ultimately, yeah, you know, y'all know where to find my album. I'm not, I'm not gonna link it. Just look it up. Fanatic Soundscapes, um, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Oh yeah, music. debate after. I love you guys, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm giving up on this Zen thing. I just can't do it. It's not in me. All right. Yeah. Oh, I I like this uh, this mode better. Much 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 more interesting. Ready to fight. Ready to bite someone's head off. That's the fanatic that I know and love. God damn it. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, last but certainly not least, my man Pisco. Uh, Pisco, um, thank you for being in uh, your uh, perspective. Thank you for being as forceful um, and as knowledgeable. And thank you for uh, anybody who's not in there join the Discord. Ridiculous hypotheticals. Um, they're always entertaining. Um, but uh, thank you, Pisco, um, who has always been. Um, uh, uh, kind to this channel, who shared a lot of his time here. Pisco also runs his own channel, which is blowing up. So you should all go check it out. Pisco, uh, closing statement and shut yourself up. Sure. I just want to first of all recognize you, Prime. I thought this was among one of the best sort of lists of topics and most fun and vigorous debates on topics, uh, especially in the foreign policy. I was not expecting to have a lot to talk about. Um, it's so good. great list of topics today, as I said before. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Shadows, Fanatic, and last year's name as always for being great sports. And I think bringing the heat themselves. I think it's a lot of fun to talk against like a passionate opposition. And I thought they um, they certainly brought that to the table. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how that back and forth went. Even if I come out hard sometimes, I don't mean it personally. On the merits, I think um, as everyone does here and as last year's name, I think forcefully and rightfully acknowledged that the independence of the judiciary is everything. And it doesn't mean that we should be able to disqualify justices for mere beliefs that we might disagree with. This, when we pick justices and, and, and uh, judges, we shouldn't be trying to sort of meet the perfect standard for people, whether that's political persuasion or religious persuasion. And by and large, the kind of beliefs that most people have in the norm um, aren't okay, going to be I just saw what you posted a lot, a lot of the time. Yeah, it's going to be fire. However, some beliefs mere beliefs in certain political ideas or religious ideas themselves are disqualifying. And if those beliefs, if there's evidence that those beliefs are influencing yeah, improperly judicial decisions, that's disqualifying. So it makes sense to have a vigorous He's got a young Bernie Sanders look going. and investigation into whether those beliefs are problematic on their face or whether those beliefs are okay on their self by themselves, but improperly influence. And if, the, if we're going to sort of empower these philosopher kings with as much power as we do in the United States Supreme Court, there should be no question about sort of how probative our scope of inquiry should be. Everything should be on the table. Uh, and I think if you want the best justices, they have to be ready to be scrutinized. And I think they all are. But by and large, I don't agree that we should just disqualify someone because just because they're religious. Um, though yeah, I do recognize do I. instances in which religiosity or certain beliefs might themselves be problematic or how they influence judicial opinions could be problematic. And I'll rest my case on that. Thank you, Prime, and the rest of the panel. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Um, <clears throat> I probably should uh, end this before uh, Minor Ace breaks his neck uh, on uh, my stream. He can do that in the privacy of his own stream. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, thank you all. Thank you, every single one of you, for being here. We're going to roll on to our walk on panel. Anyone here is welcome to join us. If not, that's okay. Um, I still appreciate you being kind enough to share even a little bit of your time with me and my community. Have a great one, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Peace. Yeah. Fanatic, link me your uh, album. I'll, I'll rate it live on stream, all right? All right. Let me give you that. I got you. Y'all thought you would never.